I don't know. Okay. Try this. Focus on your vision. Did you feel it too? Take your stuff. We're getting out of here. We've got a problem. Call them back. What's going on? It's the Prince. Come on. Damn it. Hurry up. Calm down. Maybe it has nothing to do with the party. You know full well I was in charge of it. If anything goes wrong, it's my head on the chopping block. Fuck. Damn it! It took Hazel months to convince the Hartford Chantry to ally themselves with us. So they finally accept, and then bam, a code red. There's never been a code red in Boston, damn it! This has got to be bad, M.M. It's not like you had anything to do with it. I'm sure... You don't get it. I was in charge of organizing the party. But security is Jara's problem, Yeah, normally. except Jara is a member of the Primogen. I'm not. But you're a harpy. The prince will cover you. You know she's always looking for an excuse to take him down a notch. We'll see. What do we do next? When everyone's safe, we move on to phase two. We clean house. Did you say this is the first Code Red in Boston? Ever since the fall of London, protocol is no longer a laughing matter. Whatever. They've been harping on that for four years now. They took away our internet access, our smartphones. It's called risk mitigation, that's all. A code red is an alarm signal that's sent to everyone to say, watch out, we're all in danger. And everyone runs to shelter at the nearest safe house. For us, it's with the prince. It could have been worse. I'd have preferred worse. You're not even listening to me. What do you mean by we clean house? Getting rid of our archives, our documents, anything that might betray our network and relationships. What comes after phase two? Just pray that it never comes to that. Come on, tell me. We run, we leave everything behind, and we go into hiding as far from here as we can. There's no way I'm leaving Boston. Everything I have is right here in this city. It took me years to build my clubs. I've worked too hard to give it up now. You won't have a choice. I know you hate coming here. Are you gonna be all right? What do you think? I know how to behave, Jay. Yeah, I know. Just keep your cool and it'll be fine. Ah, my little darlings. You're here at last. The fear that something horrible had happened to you terrified me. No call for theatrics, April. The prince asked to see you as soon as you arrived, Amim. I wouldn't dilly-dally if I were you. As for you, Journey, someone's triggered a code red. If anything has happened over there, I'll hold you personally responsible. You know, back in the day, 
Nobody could bat an eyelash without you knowing about it. You must know exactly what Jay is being blamed for, don't you? Mm. My dear Mm. I adore you. Really, I do. But darling, please. You're way out of your league here. This alliance with the Hartford Chantry is crucial. The princess on edge. We can't get through to anyone over there. Mm, what does this have to do with Jay? She was in charge of the whole thing, for goodness sake. Listen, both of you. From now on, I don't want to hear another word out of either of you. The prince is furious. Journey, you're coming with me. I don't see why. And as for you, Hazel wants to see you right now. Who's she, Caleb? M.M. Lewis. She smiles like a Toreador. Letters etched in bold right upon her teeth. What, what about want? that bearded guy who's swallowing his bile? Dejan Siaka. A Tremere warlock, then? Keep him at a healthy distance. With a sideward glance, he could make the blood in your veins boil. Is court attendance usually this sparse? Under ordinary circumstances, there would be more of us here. Is it because of the Code Red? Could be. We should have all been at that party. But a Code Red is a Code Red. No one can leave. I'd hate to be Caius right about now. Why? He's second honcho of house security. This promises to be a busy night. I know what you mean. It's one thing to have been told that the Nosferatu don't age well. It's another thing to see it for yourself. It's by no fault of their own. Do you think you'll be able to ask the prince tonight if you can embrace me? No. Now is no longer the time. And he is your child? Mr. Beryl Underwood. Tread lightly. He's a member of the Primogen. They're the check to the Prince's power. The check and balance. They backed Hazel when she rose to power after Quentin King. They'd hoped to control her. What? Things didn't go as planned? I just have a feeling she will surprise them. Never forget that the court is a chessboard. We are monsters, and we sacrifice pawns. If you want to be a major piece, then behave accordingly. But... Nothing can happen to you here. We're in the prince's house. She must be finished by now. Wait for me. This won't take long. It's out of the question, M.M. I won't let her get away with this. All right. Calm down, Dijon. Where's Journey? What's it to you? Don't start with me. She was in charge of the party. She has to take responsibility for this. Leave her out of it. It's too late for that. Don't waste your time covering for her. She's not a kid anymore. I haven't heard from my child, and no one's able to get through to them over there. Go on then. Go and save Imani and stop wasting your breath. There are rules. Need I remind you? We're all stuck here. You're such a good boy. You'll never change. Dijon! What? Oh, come on, Hilda, she needs to grow up. Leave us. Mem, please, stop calling me that. I was worried about you. You still haven't moved on, have you? You're always getting in my way. Lower your voice. People are staring. Do you know what this Code Red is all about? You're in the Primogen. You must know something. I'm in the same boat as the rest of you. Apparently, it was from one of Moore's retainers. That's all I know. Who's that? Jason Moore. Don't you remember him? He's the human who manages our interests when the sun comes up. He handles our assets, errands with the banks. What does he have to do with this? I don't know, 
It now seems that Miss Hazel Iverson, the mighty Prince of Boston, is no longer on speaking terms with the Primogen. As if now were the ideal time. She asked to see me. Do you know why? My best guess is that she'd like to talk to you about Journey, of course. I always warned you that girl was trouble. Yeah, sure. I've gotta go. A uh, ma'am. We haven't seen you here in ages now, have we? Let's holster our weapons. I'm only here because of that goddamn Code Red. Blunt and to the point, as usual. With a bit of luck, your suffering will be over soon. How's business these days? Why? You wanna invest? Don't tempt me. Hmm. I'm shocked to think you put so much as a penny into one of my clubs. They don't bring in enough of your taste, Beryl. You're right. I'm not interested in them. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to be alone. I'm waiting for Caleb. Hey, Abby. Hey, M.M. Abby, do you know what's going on? I'm sorry, but I can't. Please? I feel like I've been plopped down in the middle of a minefield. There are rumors about Journey. Rumors about how this is all her fault. Did you know that Jay was in charge of the party? Shit. I bet she's gonna take the fall for whatever happened. I don't think she's involved, but we've got to be on our guard. What a shitty night. Hazel must be pissed. What the hell could she want with me? Okay, Mom? Penny for your thoughts? Nothing, Pumpkin. What were you saying? You saw pictures again? You're not going back to the Institute, are you? No, don't fret. I'm gonna stay here with you now. I don't like it when Richard takes you away. He's my psychiatrist. He's helping me so I can be with you. Mom has a little trouble sometimes, remember? I see things that haven't happened yet. And I forget others. Yes, I know. And you have to slumber so you can rest all alone sometimes. But three years was too long. But now we'll be together forever. We'll be inseparable. Like two peas in a pod. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mom? What's going on? Why does everybody look so upset? I think something serious is happening. I'm worried. I still haven't seen Richard. I looked for him so he could explain, but he can't be found. So what do we do now? Uh, I was told to wait here because Hazel wants to see us. There are grown-ups coming and your mother needs to talk to them. Oh, then I'll go hide because grown-ups talk to me too much. <laughs> if you want, sweetie, but don't wander off. Go on. Show me what you do to make sure no one spots you. Okay, here I go. Laisha. It's been a while. Hey, M.M. When did you get out? Just tonight. Hazel wanted to see me. That means she's extremely worried about the situation. That or she's a major drama queen of us who have experienced a code red and survived. Thanks for the heads up, Professor Bazori. First Siaka, now you. Why won't anybody give me a break tonight? Maybe you asked for it. 
Or maybe if you behaved in a manner more appropriate to the circumstances and our setting, then you'd better understand why everyone is so nervous. See, I could jump down my throat. Was I supposed to let him take his nerves out on me? No, I'm sorry. That's not how things work, Bazori. We must all remain calm and accept any help we can get, even from the most unusual sources. That's surprising to hear, coming from a blue blood. At least your certainties come from a more solid source than a prophecy from a child of Malkov. You don't know what you're talking about. All I'm saying is that whatever the problem is, your hallucinations aren't gonna help us solve it. We're all in danger. When I awoke, I sensed a threat everywhere, all around us. I've never felt anything like it. Please, explain. It was as if we were all going to disappear into chaos. But you're probably right. It's just Hazel and her flair for the dramatic. Only time will tell. Good evening, ladies, sir. The prince shall see you now. Hazel. Dalson. Come in, M.M. I wanted to have a word with you. What can I do for you? I'm glad you're here. It's been a long time since we last saw each other. Tell me, where were you tonight? Like everybody else, I suppose. At home, getting ready for the party. How fortunate you weren't running early. Why? What's happened? You know what the Code Red means. There was a breach. This is intolerable. These agreements were supposed to celebrate the power of my court. Instead, I've been made to look a fool in the eyes of my allies. We'll have to increase our diplomatic efforts with the Warlocks. Send new emissaries to Osborne. What's that got to do with me? Don't you worry about that for now. We have more urgent matters to attend to. We bring Journey to me. What do you want with her? I have a few questions I need to ask her. If mistakes were made, I need to know what happened. I'm sure that your friend will have a lot to tell me. She hasn't done anything. Hazel. I'll be the judge of that. Yes, my prince. I'll be right back. I didn't bring you here just for that. I have something to offer you. I'm listening. It's about the Primogen Council. You know everyone who's in it. Beryl, Richard, Hilda. Their support was much appreciated after the disappearance of the previous prince. Quentin King. But now, they've become an obstacle. It's been going on for months. They systematically oppose everything that I do. It must stop now. That's nothing new. That's rule number one of all the Primogen. The contrary will be worrisome. That's what I thought, too. But after tonight... Well, I wonder. The Camarilla has faced many challenges in the past few years. Many of our strongholds have fallen. I won't let Boston suffer the same fate. But for that, I need loyal allies. Also, how would you like a spot in the Primogen? I... uh... what? You've always taken care of your community, M.M without ever asking for anything in return. It might be time you took a leading role in the community's affairs. Hilda won't let you do it. She'll never see me as her equal. Being seated next to her child? She'll feel humiliated. I'm her prince. She will obey me. She's not gonna like it. I don't care. What I'm offering is much bigger than all that. What do you think? I don't know. I need to think about it. Time is of the essence. You're a businesswoman, M.M. I know you'll be up to it, but we'll talk about it again soon. In the meantime... I need to clear my head. Do it. You won't be able to hunt tonight. It's better to be prepared. Bring me Journey. I will. I have the utmost confidence in you, M.M. Do not fail me. 
You can count on me. What the hell is going on? M.M., I'm happy to see you in one piece. Hey, Syl. I'd like some refreshment, please. Of course, I'll get you a glass. I was thinking more like a vessel. Oh, serve yourself. But try not to damage them, okay? They're all I've got left in stock. I get it, I'll be careful. I'm right here if you need anything else. Come on, it won't take long. Yes. Do you think the Code Red will last much longer? I hope not. The faster I get out of here, the better. What? And Mem Lewis, the Black Rattler's Rose, is afraid of a handful of politicians? God, no. <laughs> Fine. Let me know if I can do anything for you. I'm supposed to find Jay. Do you know if she's done talking to April? Huh. Good question. Uh, I saw her earlier, but she wasn't with Miss Bosley. She went into that alcove on your right, but that was a while ago. Thanks. You... you might want to avoid hanging around with her, you know? I've heard stuff about her. I know, and it's not true. She didn't do anything, all right? Fine. Sorry. Miss Iverson has the top floor all to herself? Yes, that's where she's got her office for hearings, as well as her personal quarters. Miss Bosley is the only one who has access to them. I heard the Prince put together a surveillance unit. Yeah, the cave. Mr. Lido and his team spend their nights there. It's just below us. But don't even think about going down there. It's only for sewer rats. Thanks for the vessel. My pleasure. Come back any time you want. Can I help you? I've got to talk to Jay. You haven't seen her, have you? No, you should ask April. It's a good idea. Thanks for the advice. Do you still work for April? Well, aren't you rude? My loyalty is with the court. Seems like Bosley's leading you around by the nose, though. She's got... some extra responsibilities. Sure. But that's it. I have my own agenda. Mm-hmm. I'm not surprised. I've got stuff to do. See you later. I... I'm sorry about before. I'm just a little edgy tonight. I know. This isn't the first time we've gotten in a fight over nothing. Your child, Imani. She was there. Still no news? No. Radio silence. And Hazel refuses to talk to me. I spent months kowtowing to those Hartford assholes for this agreement. If she has the info, now's not the time to hold it back. These Hartford guys. How well do you know them? Well enough. I won't let things end like that. I'm looking for Journey. Have you seen her? No, I'm sorry. I assume you've already tried her office? You told me you knew the Hartford Warlocks well. Yeah, some of them. I was in touch with their representative, Deneb. He was supposed to replace me on the council. You're leaving us? Uh, not really. It's part of the agreement with the Chantry. Deneb and I were supposed to switch places. Why was Hazel doing business with them? She had plans for the blood market in the region. We were meant to be in charge of supplying high-quality blood. They were supposed to take care of stabilizing it, or try at least. That's nuts. Has anyone ever tried it before? Never. That's why I'm worried. I don't give a shit about Hartford, but this project is really important. I understand. Well, I'll leave you to it. I've got to find Jay. If I see Journey, I'll tell her you're looking for her. I didn't think I'd see you again so soon.
Did you want something, perhaps? You haven't seen Journey, have you? She's not here. It would be a shame if you've showed up too late. Watch it, Beryl. What? Should I be afraid? Have you got a monster up your sleeve? You never learn, do you? Why, you goddamn- I'm in a whole different league, my dear. You would do well to pack up your threats and march right back to where you belong before I run out of patience. Hey, Fang. Good evening, Miss Lewis. Call me a ma'am, please. Did you come with Galeb? Yes, but he's so very busy. You didn't happen to see Journey, did you? I'm sorry. I don't know everyone's names yet. Exactly did Hazel want with you? She asked me to go and fetch Journey. Ah. So, you think this is gonna get ugly too? How is Hazel? She asked a lot of questions. She was a little paranoid. She's losing her grip. Be careful. Why are you telling me this? This is the first time you've ever been involved in a court intrigue. Up until this instant, I've handled things for you. And that was fine by me. If the prince is under pressure, choose your words carefully. I hate the court. Oh, I've gotta go. I've got stuff to do. Be careful. Have you seen Jay anywhere? You can't let her out of your sight for two seconds. The prince sent me to get her. I can't discuss that with you. You can tell me. My lips are sealed. The only way I can make sure you don't talk is to keep my own lips sealed. Not that I think in a million years this is what happened, but what if Jay messed up somehow? What would happen to her? Depends on the mistake. And how bad the consequences were. At best, the prince will be mad. At worst? Destruction? Yeah. There's a good chance of that. Fine. I won't insist. If you see her, tell her I'm looking for her. Yeah. Sure. I told you I was looking for Jay earlier. And? And? I found the note she left you. I wonder what April would say if I showed it to her. You went through my stuff? Is that all you're worried about? Uh, no. It wasn't personal. Journey was in a panic. She asked me for the pass to get into Jara's apartment. Did she say why? Only that she was looking for evidence. I didn't really get it. Let's keep this between us, alright? April's got other fish to fry. I'll see about that. I'm going to find her. No fucking way. Shit. So this what? is where you've been Oh, hiding. Jesus, it's you. You scared the shit out of me. How did you find me? You're really bad at covering your tracks. Are you alone? What the hell is going on? Shit, ma'am. It's a fucking nightmare. The code red is definitely because of the party. April told me Hazel was gunning for me. She thinks I'm responsible for this shit show. So you're hiding in Drory's room? I'm looking for evidence. I saw that Jara had the file on the party. It's got all the contracts and stuff in it that will prove I did my job right. But I can't find them. It was my only shot to defend myself against her. Hey, slow down. It's gonna be all right. They don't have anything on you, do they? No, of course not. I did everything right, ma'am. I was the one who rented the place. Same as always. Rooftop, away from prying eyes. I met with Richard to organize the vessels. I arranged for limos to be sent for the Hartford Chantry. I went through the same secure limo agency as usual. They're ours, so there's no risk. What the hell could have gone wrong? I don't know. But there's no time to think about it. Hazel wants to see you. I... And she asked you? It's gonna be fine, Jay. I'm sure you can explain everything. I'm scared, ma'am. Don't worry about anything. I'm here. I'll follow you.
Glacier. It's good to see you. Be good, sweetie. How was your reunion with Halsey? Thank you, Hazel. Your gift was wonderful. You shouldn't have troubled. You're welcome. We should never have kept you apart for this long. Good evening, Delson. Good evening, Laisha. How are you feeling? I feel great. Better and better since I got my little sugar fangs back. Wonderful. I haven't seen Richard yet. Does he know I've been released from the Institute? No, I'm the Prince. It was my decision. He is your psychiatrist, but you don't need his permission for everything. He wasn't at the party, was he? I'm searching for everyone who's still missing. Don't worry about him. Thank you. Laisha, I know I can be frank with you. For four years, I have been working to heal the city's wounds. You've already helped me avoid traps in the past. You're not like the other children of Malkav. Quinton King knew that. The Mad King. I remember, yeah. I had you released from the Institute because your premonitions are the most detailed, the most accurate. I wanted them to help me understand the Chantry's hand more clearly before we signed our agreement with them. But this alert changes everything. I need to understand what's just happened. Did you sense anything, possibly about what happened tonight? It's all very hazy in my mind. Come on, we're friends. You must tell me everything. Yes, yes, I know, but... Uh, I saw images, but they had nothing to do with this party. It didn't make any sense. It was a long, white hallway. It's a little early, for sure, but it's a good start. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't be of more help. Don't be sorry. There's something else you can do for me. Your discretion can still be of use to me. I need to be sure that none of the members of my council are going to take advantage of the situation. You and Delson are the only two people I trust entirely. The members of the council have their council lodgings here. It gives them the impression that they have power, and it means I can keep an eye on them. I'm going to give you the key. Go and see if you find anything that could make me doubt their loyalty. Anything that might make me think there's something in the works. Uh, all right. Miss Drury burned the midnight oil to make sure this event was secret. I imagine there might be some evidence in the information she gathered. I need it. All right, consider it done. You've never disappointed me, Laisha. Please don't start today. Share what we've discussed with anyone. I don't need more gossip. Can I take Halsey with me? Of course. All right then. I'll be right back. So oh, this is where you've been hiding. What? Oh, Jesus, it's you. You scared the shit out of me. How did you find me? You're really bad at covering your tracks. Are you alone? What the hell is going on? Shit, Mom, it's a fucking nightmare.
not surprised. What doesn't surprise you? For you to turn up at a time like this. The prince had me released. Of course, she needs you. <laughs> I'm guessing she sent you to spy on the council. What do you mean? Tell me, do you remember the last time she pulled you out of your musty hole? It's just that I... You don't remember, do you? You're still having those little memory issues, it seems. And I suppose Halsey's here, too. Of course she is. <laughs> the more the merrier. Don't start with me, Beryl. Otherwise... Why don't you go out and play in the sun? And let me get back to work. Work? With everything that's going on? Hazel will appreciate your dedication. Get out! Please! Richard's apartment. <laughs> he didn't change a thing, as usual. So, did you find your teddy? No, not yet. I'm not sure he's here. What about you? Did you finish your job for the prince? I found something that might be of interest to Hazel. Does that mean we're going back to see the prince then? Let's go, Sugar Fangs. Laisha. I'm all ears. Everything went all right. I knew I could count on you. Was Halsey a good girl? Yes, as usual. Good. Were you able to find anything interesting in Ms. Drury's apartments? Yes. There was intel she had gathered on the guests, including those from the Hartford Chantry. Hmm. Anything about their regent, Deneb Osborne? Yes, he seems to be obsessed with memory magic. Interesting. I gave everything to Delson. Thank you. I'll take a look at it later. Were you able to see or hear anything interesting? Hilda was in her room. She was acting strangely. What do you mean? She was whispering things, talking to a picture of a mem. Touching, but that's of no importance. At Dijon's, I found a letter addressed to the Salem Chantry. Did he betray me for the warlocks? I don't know. It just said that he's participating in your project, but that he would have preferred an agreement with Salem. Oh, I understand his recent illusions a little better now. I'm going to need to have a word with him. Go on. I found Journey in Jara's office. How did she get in there? I don't know. But Emem joined her. It's like there's no security here. But do go on. I want to know everything. What did you see? They talked, and Emem told her that you wanted to see her. She told her she had to bring her back. Journey agreed. That's it. Was there anything else? That's all I was able to find. I knew I could count on you. Thank you, Laisha. Richard still wasn't there. Were you able to find out anything else? Yes. One of my servants just came back from his bar, the Red Salon, as that's where he does his research. I had hoped to find him there. But she confirmed that Dr. Dunham had gone to the party early with a few of his vessels. I'm sorry. Laisha. No. If he had been destroyed, I would have felt it. I have to go find him. You're the most discreet of all of us, it's true. But we have no idea what might have happened there. It could be dangerous. I won't be alone. Halsey will be with me. Of course. And one last thing. Dr. Dunham wasn't the only one there. There was also Miley, my child. Bring her back to me. Yes, of course. We'll leave right away. I wouldn't expect anything less of you. Thank you, Laisha. M.M., come here. Thanks, M.M. You've brought me Journey. I knew I could count on you. Not right now, but I will soon. I have one more favor to ask of you.
my prince. Delson. Zori. It seems that the Camarilla is in danger. I am at your disposal. Your sense of duty is a credit to you, Caleb. You haven't lost your touch, I hope. The Code Red is linked to the Unification Party with the Chantry. No one there is answering anymore. How many of us were there? Probably a good twenty, give or take. Dr. Dunham and our top spy, Jara Drury, were already there. Hmm, we might have lost two members of the Primogen. What about Hartford? Have you heard from them? If those dogs had anything to do with what happened, I'll cut their throats myself. Do you think they might be involved? I don't know. It's too early to draw any conclusions. Where do you want to start? Can I... can I count on you? You have no reason to doubt me. One by one, the Anseli heed the beckoning and go east. You're the eldest in the city now. Don't do this to me. Not now. I would be very grateful to you. And Fang. How may I be of service? Go and see Caius. With Jaragon. He's in charge of security. He may have learned something. You can count on me. You have my absolute confidence, Caleb. about your abject fawning. I call it respect. It appears that it's something that sewer rats know nothing about. Apparently, Caius feels he's entitled to refuse to see a member of the Primogen. I won't forget it. This isn't just a courtesy visit. You need him. I have some messages I need to deliver. They must be important. It's too bad it's forbidden. Security is one thing, but business won't wait. You can't put your accounts aside for a minute. The expression time is money is bandied about, but most people don't understand the real meaning of the phrase, I do. Tell me, you haven't introduced me to your charming protege yet. Zufeng. <laughs> yes, Zhu Feng, a name that's as delectable as her blood, I'm sure. Ah, you're planning to introduce her to the very select club of Galeb Bazori's progeny, aren't you? I hope that the prince will allow me to, shortly. I hope so for your sake, who knows, our dear Hazel is so unpredictable. At any rate, it would be an honor for me to welcome and guide her. You will speak of nothing with her at all. Is that an order? A word of advice. Oh, pardon me. I fell out of the habit of receiving advice from you so long ago. Well, if you'll excuse me, I must end this ever so pleasant conversation. <laughs> I need to find a way to avoid losing too much money. He doesn't want anyone to bother him. Prince's orders. I see. He's holed up in the server room. You'll need a pass to get in. There's one on his desk. Thank you. Finally, some good news on this shitty night. What's the situation? Not good. Not good at all. The Prince needs more than that. I hope you've got it. You want details? Tell me what happened. Everything was going as planned until 11.10 p.m. The prince's child, Miss Sellers, contacted me. The Hartford Warlocks had just arrived. That's the last time we heard from any of them. Less than 20 minutes later, we received the code red, just as we were leaving to join them. Who sounded the alert? A man named Wu. Ever heard of him? A retainer, one of Jason Moore's bodyguards. More. The asset manager. What was he doing at the unification party? He was supposed to answer technical questions about the financial viability of the agreement. More is good at hiding our kind trafficking. 
He's one of them, after all. And you're the one who received the Code Red, personally. It arrived directly, here. It's authentic. I verified it. Anything that could be of interest to the Prince? I'm working on it. Jara Drury is the expert, not me. If only she was here. Any movement with the Anarchs? As usual, they're keeping their distance. You know it's always a pain in the ass to locate them. Any word from Hartford? Do you think it's them? It would be ill-fated. I knew we should never have trusted those damn warlocks. Any son of Jara? Nothing at all. And that's not good. According to the protocol, she should have been there early. If they got hit, she would have been first in line. There's one thing we haven't considered. The Crimson Oaks. They were behind the Quincy Market attack, weren't they? I don't have any proof. We just caught a thin blood who wanted to trap the Prince, and who told us about them. Apparently they're new in town, but Miss Drury thinks he's giving us the runaround. Did you look into it? I tried, but I didn't have the resources to discover anything else. Leave no stone unturned. Hello. You. It's about damn time. Shit. What? You're... Hello? Damn it! I lost them. Who was it? Wu. Shit. Now it's just ringing. What did he say? The party was indeed attacked. Apparently it was a real bloodbath. He and James had just enough time to get more out. They're stopping by his place to pick up some sensitive documents. And then what? Are they coming here? I don't know. We got cut off. Call him back. I'll inform Hazel. This is a critical moment for us. No reason yet to Cut think- Cut her off again and I'll slit your throat. Oh! Excuse me! Careful, Hazel. How dare you speak to me like that! Enough! You... I command you to be silent and listen to me. Oh, so that's how it is. That's enough, Beryl. Yes, it's come to this. You would do well to listen to your sire. We have just been attacked. This is not a time for childish displays of discontent. Galeb, the Code Red was sent by Wu. Go to Moors and find out what's going on. As you wish. And bring Moore back to me. He was supposed to be at the party. I don't understand why he's the only one who was able to call us. I would like to speak to him very much. Consider it done. I trust you. He might be involved in this, so gather any documents you can find there that could tie us to him. Very well. Delson, see if you can get Caius to find us a new middleman in the cane business to manage our interests. I don't want to take any chances. Then, I want you to talk to everyone. Somebody must have seen or heard something. Dajon, make sure all our defenses are in place. Yes, Hazel. M.M., you will go to the old Jefferson Library. What's there? That's where the Hartford Chantry calls home here. I gave them the building so they could have a base in Boston. I demand to take her place. Request denied. What game are you playing, Hazel? It's a suicide mission. It's all right. I got this. I'm not made of sugar. She's not ready for this kind of mission. I should go with her, at the very least. No. You will remain here, and Mem goes alone. Why don't you send Dajan instead? Enough, Hilda. Dajan has work to do elsewhere, and I don't need to explain myself. Hazel, if anything happens to her, I'll... Nothing, Hilda. You'll do nothing. It's high time you learned to trust her. Which one of us are you planning to send to the party? She's already left. What? Who? I sent Laisha. Are you serious? A few hours ago, she was snoozing behind locked doors in a psych ward. You're playing a dangerous game, Hazel. 
Without us, you would never have come into power. You've chosen the worst possible moment to turn your back on us. On the contrary, I find this moment very appropriate. I am the Prince of Boston, and you are the Primogen. I owe you nothing. Delson, escort them out. The session is adjourned. You all have your instructions. Hmm, nice badge. Keep an eye on the elevator. I'm, I'm gonna go wait for forensics. Okay. Let me know oh, when they get here. Oh, excuse me. Special Agent Smith. The FBI! Finally, some backup! Lieutenant's expecting you. Straight ahead. Watch out for the bloodstains. Forensics hasn't been through here yet. Got it. Hmm. Don't worry. I'll finish here and then I'm on my way. Breathe. You're gonna be okay. Lieutenant Anderson, I'm in charge of the investigation. Special Agent Smith, FBI. Really? Smith. Is that some kind of joke? No. Why? Uh, let it go. Never mind. I'll give you the DL. We got a call from the caretaker around 2.15. He told us that one of his residents was brought in with an injury carried by his bodyguards. We sent a squad car that got here around 2.45. Is the caretaker still here? He's in the living room. But I don't think you'll be able to get anything useful out of him. Poor guy's in shock. Who was the first person on the scene? That would be Baker. He's somewhere around here. It shouldn't be hard to find him. Okay, then what? When they stepped inside, the guys came face to face with that. Do we know who the victim is? Yeah, he had his ID on him. It's the owner, a guy named Jason Moore. I don't know who this guy pissed off, but things didn't work out too well for him. Did you secure all the exits and entrances to the building? Yes, we've got men on the ground floor and in the parking garage. How do you get to the parking garage? You'll have to ask the caretaker. He's the one who took my men down there. Do we know if he had a family? Yeah, a wife and an eight-year-old daughter. The wife, Lydia Moore, 34 years old, architect, dual citizen of Costa Rica and the U.S., no criminal record. Yeah, we're trying to get a hold of her. The daughter, June, we've looked and she's not here either. What have you got on Moore? He was an asset manager. But if you ask me, he was involved in some shady stuff that we're sure to find out about. It's not every day that an accountant gets his head chopped off. Where are the bodyguards? We haven't found anyone yet. Go on. We're still looking for the head. We're waiting on forensics for everything else, but they're busy with another case. What case? You haven't heard? At one international place. They say it was a real bloodbath. So, you're here to take over the case? No, no. I'm working on something else. Moore's name popped up in one of our investigations. But I can't talk about it. Okay, I'll let my team know. My ship ended up at the bottom of the sea as well. Like my other lives. I warned you, Jason. God, did I warn you. We destroy all that we touch. I don't have time for this. Give me what you have. Uh, what I've got. Of course, sir. Here, that's everything. You made the right choice. Tell me exactly what they asked you to do. I got a message at 2.20 telling me to go to this address. I was supposed to pick up more and some financial documents. After that, I was supposed to wait for further instructions. Read the message you received. Target Jason Moore. Address 200 Clarendon Street, top floor. 
Exfiltrate target if possible. Otherwise, final elimination. Destroy Katapata's files. Complete mission for further instructions. If I had gotten to more before you did... I would have had to take him out. Well, you could have tried. Well... I hope I'm not going to have any trouble. Do what you have to do. I'll talk to the Prince about it later. Very well, Mr. Bazori. Officer Baker, can I help you? Were you the first person to arrive at the scene of the crime? Yes, sir. My partner and I were the first to get here. Just tell me about it. We got the call around 2.20. The caretaker had called because a resident was injured. It took us about 20 minutes to get here. The poor guy was in a panic. He told us he'd seen one of the tenants, Jason Moore, enter the building, and he looked hurt. He was being held up by his two bodyguards, and he was bleeding a lot. So I went upstairs with the caretaker. We saw blood in the elevator and on the landing. I rang the doorbell, but nobody answered, so the caretaker opened the door. I identified myself. There were traces of blood leading down the hall away from the entrance, and just after that, I uh, found the decapitated body. Did your partner come with you? No, he stayed in the foyer to secure the entrance to the building. Did you touch the body? No. There was nothing I could do to help him, so I uh, secured the scene. I put my gloves on to take his ID out of his jacket pocket so we could identify him. Then I called it in. Where was the caretaker during that time? I told him not to come inside, but he followed me. When he saw the corpse, he was really shaken. He wouldn't let go of me. Then what did you do? I called for backup. They told me that forensics would get here as soon as they could. They were out at another case. That was their top priority. After that? I secured the entrance to the apartment. After that, I searched the ground floor. There was nobody around. But from the looks of things, somebody searched the apartment. When Sergeant Lehane got here, she took care of upstairs. It's a good thing, too because it took everyone else another 15 minutes to get here. She didn't find anyone there. So there's no sign of the family then? Nothing. The place is empty. That's it? Oh yeah. The guys in the parking lot said they saw one of Moore's cars leave after he came home. Hey, do you think the wife was in cahoots with one of the bodyguards to get rid of the husband? I'm listening. Well, a lot of times in cases like these, it's the spouse who did it. What if the wife was having an affair with one of the bodyguards? She packs up her and her daughter's stuff while her lover lures the husband into a trap somewhere. For some reason, things don't go according to plan. He comes home injured and figures out what's going on. He attacks his wife and the bodyguard kills him to protect her with whatever he happens to find. Makes sense, doesn't it? Not bad. Keep digging, Baker. To see you there. Adams. No. This can't be happening. What a nightmare. So much blood. I've got a few questions. I tried to help him. I told him we should call 911. I told him. Sir, listen to me. It's all right. Calm down. You're safe and you did the right thing. I did the right thing. I need you to answer a few questions for me. I... I... <sighs> yes, of course. W what do you want to know? Did you know Mr. Moore well? We weren't friends, if that's what you're asking. But we got to know each other. With time. <laughs> he was a creature of habit. Since he worked late, he would often ask me for things at night. A newspaper? batteries, ice. I, I think he asked me for just about everything. I prided myself. 
on always being able to get what he needed, no matter what time it was. You'd have thought he pretty much lived after dark. Like his clients. Did Mr. Moore have many visitors? For a man with his status, it was nothing surprising. But, well... Yes? His visitors mostly came in the middle of the night. I must admit, that's a little unusual. That's what working for us is like. He told me he had a lot of foreign clients, and he had to juggle different time zones. That's what working from home is like. He had colleagues over for late night meetings, too. <laughs> but since little June was born, not as many people came around. That was wise. Did he have any enemies that you were aware of? No. He was a very respectable man. No bad company or anything. Except for us. Without any disrespect to the deceased, were you aware of any extramarital affairs he may have had? Mr. Moore was a good man. He would never have disrespected his wife or even contemplated it, I'm sure. She could have been okay with it. There were no young women coming and going. That's a very inappropriate question. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Do you know his wife? Mrs. Moore is a model resident. She always has something nice to say to the staff. And is the first to welcome new neighbors, too. A true lady. Do you know where she is? Mr. Moore told me she'd gone to their home in Costa Rica. She goes there pretty often. <laughs> She's an architect. And she likes to work in her home country. She has family there. Do you think anyone could have been so angry with her that they could have taken it out on her husband? Oh, no. I don't think so. It's true that... I imagine the girl left with her mother? Not at all. It was the start of the school year, and Mrs. Moore left two weeks ago. I haven't seen her since Monday, when Mr. Moore took her to school on the first day. She must be staying with a friend. I... <sighs> Poor little thing. <sighs> Thank heaven she wasn't here. Do you know his bodyguards? Yeah, there's uh, Jack, James, and Wu. But you won't hear me singing their praises. Why not? Oh, they're good at strutting around and acting tough when everything is going well. But where were they tonight? Can you tell me that? That was their job, right? They were paid to... to protect him. What do you mean by acting tough? <laughs> More than once I overheard them talking to Mr. Moore like they were his boss. The world upside down. They worked for us, just like your dear Mr. Moore. I hope they won't find another job anytime soon. Tell me about the evening again, please. What happened tonight? <sighs> Mr. Moore left with his, his three bodyguards uh, earlier in the evening. One of them got in the car and Mr. Moore came down around midnight. And then? They came back around 2 a.m.? Uh, Mr. Moore was limping. He, he was leaning on one of his bodyguards and he, he was bleeding. Was he injured? I told him I could call an ambulance or a doctor, but he didn't answer. I went closer to insist, but Wu told me they were in control of the situation, that it was no big deal. They went upstairs and I saw drops of blood in front of the elevator. I told myself they were being unreasonable. What did those two goons know about it? So I called Mr. Moore on the internal line. Several times. Did he pick up? Not once. So I went upstairs and rang the doorbell. But nobody answered. So I went back down to the front desk and I called you. The lieutenant told me there was an access to the basement. <sighs> yes. Uh, using the service elevator th through the kitchen. You need a magnetic pass t to use it. I gave the spare to your colleagues who wanted to go down there. I still have the original. Do you want it? Please. Thank you for your statement. 
You have to find out who did this, officer. Justice needs to be done for him. <laughs> and for his family. And we need to find out who's messing with us. That's what we're here for. You can count on us. Stick around in case we have more questions. FBI. Oh, hi. Officer Norton. Hey, they didn't tell me you were coming down. Got something? Wyatt saw Moore leave at 225. Wyatt? The parking attendant, part security guard, part valet. Anyway, a car that belonged to the victim left in a hurry. Or at least he thought it was more, until he found out he got his head cut off. There's skid marks on the ground and uh, signs of a minor accident at the exit. He must have really been in a hurry. He? What? You said he must have been in a hurry. You're saying it was a man. Oh, no, no. It, it just slipped out without thinking. It could have been a woman. Do you think it was the murderer? We're not sure of anything at this point. I've got a few questions. Where's the witness? Wyatt, he's uh, in the security booth over there. He's super nice. I don't think you'll need to question him again. You mentioned skid marks. Yeah, they're very distinct. They start from his parking space and go all the way to the exit. They clean this place twice a day, so there's no doubt they're fresh. The driver peeled out of here in a hurry. And you said there was an accident near the exit? Yeah, minor one. Broken headlight, paint marks. He must have had a hard time handling it. Do we know what kind of car it was? Yeah, we called it in. It's the victim's sports car. Wyatt said there's only the sedan left. Did you find anything else? No, that's it. Since we're still waiting for forensics, we gotta be careful. But you know how it is, right? Let me know if you have uh, any other questions. Hello, Mr. Bazori. You must be mistaken. I'm Smith. Agent Smith. Yeah, sure. Do I know you? Everyone knows who you are. Is it just me, or are you pals with all the cops around here? Let's just say I'm pretty... intuitive. You know what I mean. In the years you've been hunting us, you've acquired a hell of a reputation among our kind. I didn't know you would come. I'm not looking for any trouble. I... I, I didn't do anything wrong. I... Just who the hell are you? Me? I, I'm nobody. The name's Wyatt Alvarez. I was embraced five years ago. Mm. A thin blood. I spent years hunting them when Quentin King ruled Boston. Unfortunately for me, the blood of my sire was already weak. So I can still catch glimpses of the sun, but I don't have actual powers. Who created you? His name was Victor, but he died last year. Do the kindred know you exist? Yeah, yeah. I followed the rules, but the prince told me he never wanted to see me again, so I try not to make waves. I try to help out here and there. I'm hoping someone will notice one day, and I'll be allowed to become a true kindred. That's not very likely, if you ask me. I hope it works out for you. I'm doing what I can. Actually, if you could put a word in with the prince, I'd be eternally grateful. I don't get involved in that kind of thing. Of course, obviously. But seeing as how I'm already working for your child, Mr. Underwood, I thought that maybe... You work for Beryl? Yes, I also work at a red salon, a couple of hours each day. What do you do there, exactly? Cleaning, mostly. What are you doing here, then? Uh, I thought it was a pretty cushy gig. It leaves me with a lot of spare time, even while I'm on the job. And it also means I can live at night. Are you involved in what happened up there? Not at all. I swear. I've got a sweet job here. I'd never risk it. So what happened? I've got no clue. My shift started at 10 p.m., as usual. The sixth floor tenant left around 11. At midnight, one of Mr. Moore's bodyguards came down to get the car. They were going to a party, apparently. I didn't see them come back. Then, around 2.20 or so, one of Mr. Moore's cars went flying out of here. It hit the wall near the exit. Did you recognize the car? Yeah, it was his sports car. The only one like it here. Did you see who was behind the wheel? 
No, it's got tinted windows. I thought it was Mr. Moore at first. But from what happened upstairs, <laughs> I doubt it now. Hey, were you the one who... You really think if it was me who did it, I'd be standing around here trying to figure out what happened? What can you tell me about Moore? I saw him a lot. He's the tenant I got to know best because of his working hours. And he was the most generous when it came to maintaining his cars, too. Every once in a while, sometimes I see her with a girl, coming back from vacation. <sighs> sure is good they weren't here tonight. What makes you say that? Well, Mrs. Moore's car. I haven't seen it in the garage for weeks, and she's the one who took the girl to school. Mr. Moore told me they were on vacation, and he was going to go join them soon. Did you see the bodyguards today? James came by earlier this evening to move Mr. Moore's car, but I haven't seen them since. How do you open the dumpsters in the garbage room? What dumpster? The dump... <laughs> Are you toying with me? No, but the cops already looked. There's nothing there. Open it. Mr. Missouri, I promise you won't find anything there. And I can't open it anyway. It's for staff only. Why do you want to go through the trash anyway? There were some traces of blood on the garbage chute in the kitchen upstairs. Somebody tossed something, and I want to know what it was. Oh, that's why. I understand. Listen. We're just gonna forget this conversation ever happened, and Excuse me? You didn't just try to corrupt my memories, did you? Oh, no. I, I, I'm so sorry, Mr. Missouri. I shouldn't have. I know. How can I make it up to you? Before I get really angry, do you want to tell me what the hell is going on? I'm scared, Mr. Missouri. Scared of what you're gonna think when you see what I've been doing in there. I didn't mean any disrespect. You're not doing a very good job. Get a grip, man. Yes. Yes, Mr. Missouri. Open it now. Just promise me you won't touch anything. Some of my stuff is in there. Please, don't touch it. I've already wasted enough time with you. I can't just open the door for you like that. I really can't. Really? You've got to understand. I can't let you see what's inside. I've been sent by the Prince of Boston. Do you really think I owe you anything? That's not what I meant. You talk too much. Open the door. Right away. All right. It's open. Wouldn't you rather tell me what you're hiding in there? Well, I cook a little. A guy's got to survive. I don't have to tell you that. I don't make a whole lot of money here. What do you cook? Oh, a little of everything. But I've got all my stuff in there. And there's some pretty rare ingredients. Rare? Yeah. And kind of illegal, too. Such as? In some recipes, well, I use vials of Kindred's blood, for instance. Whose blood? Well, it depends on what I can find. Okay, but what have you got right now, exactly? If I tell you, can it stay just between us? You're not fucking going to start again. Okay. Oh, okay, I... I managed to obtain some of Quentin King's blood. Where did you find King's blood? You can find anything on the black market, you know. <laughs> so you're not sure it's actually his blood? Yes, it is. I had it tested. And when I used it in one of my formulas, the effects were off the charts. It took me a week to come down, and I still don't know if it was real. That guy was something else. One more thing, boss. Don't call me that. So, what's it like to be a thin blood? You're curious, aren't you? Usually, you hunt us down without asking any questions. There are rules, Wyatt. Yeah, but I never asked to be this way. If you look at it that way, I'm innocent. If that means anything to you. You've got a point. Your sire is the guilty one. Yeah. You can't judge a child for his parents' crime. I know. You shouldn't be hunted. So, what's it like to be a thin blood? It sucks. Yeah, I can still go outside during the day, but 
It's not all it's cracked up to be. The descendants just can't understand. Sure, it's nice. But even the slightest idea what that does to you, how it changes you, without even realizing it, without wanting to, it eats at you from the inside. But I'm still not complete. So if I had to choose, I'd rather live at night and be like you. Thin buds are the dregs of society. We're always wondering what's going to happen to us. You, of all people, should know that. If we want to be like you, even a little bit, we have to come up with potions that have a temporary effect. Happy to help. Oh. I wasn't expecting to see you here. Woo. I found your cook shop. You didn't touch anything, I hope. I take what I want. Yeah, yeah. Of course. It's just that... It's taken me years to find some of those things. <laughs> so what? No, no, it's nothing. I hope you found what you were looking for. I went through your trash. So? Are you interested in one of my ingredients? That's not really what I've got a problem with. What? You didn't tell me about the man's head in a plastic bag. W what But what the hell? Is it more? No. That head belonged to one of his bodyguards. I... But... It wasn't me, Mr. Missouri, I swear. I don't know anything about it. You want me to believe that it's there by sheer accident? I swear, it's... You gave me the runaround so I wouldn't go through the trash. But no. And then I just happened to find a decapitated head. I know what it looks like, but I swear, I had no idea. But everything points to you. But it's not my trash. I don't know what people throw in there. So what you're telling me is that you had no idea there was a head in your trash. I swear, Mr. Bazori, if I didn't want you poking around in the trash, it was just because of my lab. I didn't know what you'd think. I had no idea someone had thrown a human head in there. Okay. Let's say I believe you. Happy to help. Does the name Fortress Security mean anything to you? Does it ever? Hard to forget them. They came out here last year to work on a project for about two weeks. And this is Moorhead interior designers here just about every season. Uh, but this time, the workers showed no respect for the common areas. There were four of them, and I can tell you they made quite a mess. I had to clean up the debris and plaster they left behind them for weeks. Any idea what they were working on? No. I mind my own business. Four workers here for two weeks, who left behind loads of debris and plaster. They weren't here for a small project. I think we're done here. Thank you. Huh? huh? What the... Good evening, Jason. Mr. Bazori. I... Oh, how did you... Maybe think about letting us know the next time you build a private bunker. It's just that... I... She sent me to find you. No. Not now. She found out about everything, didn't she? I don't understand anything you just said. But get up. We're going. I can't. I absolutely have to catch a plane tonight. I don't think that's going to happen. I'm begging you. Please. Just let me go. Before we go, what the hell is this mess all over your place? It's not my fault. I... I tried to cover up my departure. I... My bodyguards wanted to take me to the Prince, right after the shooting at the party. But I... I couldn't. Your flight? Yeah. I wanted to buy me some time. I pretended I had to to get some files that were at my house for the prince. Once I got here, I sent James to my office with my car. 
supposedly to pick up some more files there. I kill Wu by taking him by surprise. I cut off his head and threw it down the garbage chute. I put my college class ring on him and gave him my wallet. I'm sorry, Mr. Bazori. I had no choice. You don't do things halfway, do you? Okay, you've got three minutes to explain why you've got to go. I have to save my daughter. What do you mean? I know I'm screwed. But I have to save June. My God. Lydia. Please forgive me. Where is your wife? Those bastards. Slaughtered her. Because of me. They told me to get the files on all of your organization's accounts. I didn't mean to betray you. I've done nothing. A few days later, I got that picture. Who contacted you? She had nothing to do with this. Jason, stay with me. Who asked you for access to the accounts of all the Domain's members? I don't know. At first, I, I thought it was you. I mean, one of you. It could be the Hartford Chantry. Or, or the Anarchs. Where's June? They've got her too. My little June. They kidnapped her three days ago. But we must have had some of our guys keeping tabs on her. And nobody reported a kidnapping that I know of. The principal took her to the front gate in the middle of the afternoon. And doesn't have a clue as to why she did it. That's one of your tricks. I've seen you do it before. Except that I doubt it was one of us. But they insisted on the banking files. For all your accounts. Why? I've got no idea. I'm trying to figure out who would be interested. I... I know a lot of secrets. They asked me to wire money. I... I didn't want to, Mr. Bazori. I swear, I didn't want to. But they've got June. Where are you flying to? Hong Kong. We've wasted enough time here. Get up. I'm not going to be able to go with you, Mr. Bazori. I, I lost too much blood. I'm having a hard time staying conscious. I must take you back to the Prince. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm begging you. I've always refused. I, I want to stay free. I'm not really giving you a choice. Drink. That's enough. June will die if you don't let me go. Stay behind me. Stay behind me. Oh man, I gotta, I gotta get after them. I... Oh, Agent Smith, wait, is that Jason Moore? You found him? Oh, Everything we gotta get to the. fine, officer. I'll take care of him. Oh, okay. Sure. Hmm. Yeah.
Stay close. Hey, stop! Don't move! Put hey, your hands behind your head, damn it! Don't On shoot. the ground! I'm gonna shoot! That's enough, officer. My head. Ugh. Oh, shit. Don't Wait, you move a hands muscle. on your head! Hands behind your head! Let me see those hands! Let me see those hands! Let me you see those hands! You move! Don't you are! Don't, Don't you, you move! You got a I swear to God! On your knees! On your knees! Don't be a... If you move, you're dead! <laughs> Everyone calm the fuck okay. down! Everyone right. stay calm. All right. We're good. On your knees, okay. put your weapon on the ground. Look, Jason, get in the elevator. Right. It's alright, do what he it says, down. put it down! <laughs> Sorry. Let me go. If I come with you, you know what's going to happen. Get in the car. Mom. Have you ever been here before? No. This place is a rental pumpkin. It was just for the party. Oh. Do you know what happened? No. That's what we are here to find out. But we have to be very careful. Do you remember our rules for when we go out? Yes. I become invisible and don't touch anything. That's a big girl attitude. You can walk around as long as you don't stray too far. And if there's any sign of trouble, I wait for you outside? That's it. We make a great team, Sweet Fangs. The police are here. Shit. That's a bad sign. Hi, uh, I live in the building and I was told to come give a statement. You need to go down to the precinct to give your statement, ma'am. Only law enforcement is allowed here. Oh, I hadn't understood that. Thank you. Have a pleasant evening. Richard, he sensed me. He's here, but something's wrong. Oh, there's so much blood. I sense, I sense you're losing control. I sense you're losing control. It's all this blood. I need to focus. Mom, are you... are you feeling all right? Yes. Don't worry about me, Pumpkin. Mom, we... please? I... I'm going to be... sick. All this blood... it feels so... strong. Oh, crap. She feels as bad as I do. I want to leave, Mom. I'm scared. Hey. You're okay, Halsey. Uh, time out. Let's just calm ourselves down. It's so awful, Mom. My tummy really hurts. Look at me. Why would someone do this to them? My precious little sugar fangs. Look into my eyes. I'm right here. We'll take it slow, okay? Each step forward, we take together. Okay, Mom. We have to try and think of something else when that happens. I've got an idea. Let's play a game. Here? In the middle of all this? Why not? We can just pretend they're not here, right? We could play Riddle Me This. Are you sure? You know I'm pretty good at solving riddles. <laughs> me too. Hmm. I've got one. Riddle Me This. What makes a good slave but a poor master? Let me think. How about fire? Fire is something that serves us every day, but you should never let it become the boss. <laughs> yes, you got it. You are good. You're really good at riddle me this. That's better. 
You can do anything when you put your mind to it, Sugar Fangs. Wait, you didn't steal the answer by reading my mind, did you? What? Me? I'd never do that. Never. Ha ha ha. I'll come up with a harder one then. Uh, I just got here. Can you fill me in? I've never seen anything like it. It's a real bloodbath in there. Do we know what happened? Captain Paulson thinks it looks like some kind of goddamn cult. But I've heard the Feds talking about terrorists. The Feds are here already? They showed up the minute we got here. We didn't even get a chance to see everything. How'd they get here so fast? They know who did it, obviously. Do you really think it's terrorists? It's weird, but hey, it could be. There are guys who are burned to a crisp, dismembered, beaten to a pulp. With those guys, you can expect anything these days. What do we know about all these bodies? Those are the ones we can take down already. The ones that were stabbed in the chest need to be put in crates and moved to the balcony. The feds will process them. We are not allowed to touch them. Stabbed how? Looks like some kind of sacrifice. They all got stabbed in the heart, it looks like. But if you want to make yourself useful, go see Paulson. Where is he? You just missed him. He just went into the living room. Okay, thanks. I'm going to take a look around. All right, guys. Listen up. The feds are taking over the investigation. So don't touch a thing. Put all the stiffs with stakes through their hearts out on the balcony. They'll take care of them. All right, go. You know what you have to do. A uh, central dispatch sent me over to help. Captain Paulson. But you can call me Chief. Sure thing, Chief. Right. You heard the orders? I... Everything we find at the scene needs to be shown to the feds. Got it, Chief. And the balcony is off limits. So, uh, what do we know so far? Lots of Vix. It has all the makings of a drug deal gone bad. He's not buying it. But you have your doubts? I do. There's too many things that don't add up. Like what, Chief? Bodies in accelerated decomposition. Even some skeletal remains. Shit. Kindred were destroyed. My hunch is that the Feds are investigating a cult. But it's none of our business. But why can't we go outside? The Feds got here first. It's their rodeo. They secured that area to store whatever they decide to collect. To get here that fast, they must have known. What they'd find. Exactly. Good point, officer. Usually, they show up after us if it's a new case, right? Because we're the ones who call them. But that wasn't the case this time. Not at all. They even seemed annoyed to see us show up. But then they must have thought, it's nice to have help processing the scene and collecting evidence. Oh, all right. But you don't seem too thrilled about that? Am I wrong? Is it so obvious, officer? It's the first time in my entire career, and 30 years is a long time, that I feel like we're babysitting a crime scene. Babysitting? We've been ordered to secure the premises, lend our experts, and not ask any questions. Thanks for walking me through it, Chief. You report it to them if you find anything suspicious. Okay? I don't need their kind of trouble. We've already had that talk, Halsey, my love. Don't. Don't look at it. So, have you come up with another riddle for me? Yes! I've got one! I'm listening. It's not too hard, is it? No, no. Riddle me this. I fear the sun more than anything, and the mortals have been fighting me since forever. 
If they catch me, they keep me in a box. Who am I? The sun makes me think of us, but that box... That doesn't sound right. I'd say... Could it be... A fridge? You're very warm. The cold, it's the cold. Is that it? Yes! You're good at riddles, Mom. And you, my little pumpkin. You are a riddle master. Thinking about something else helped. <laughs> Me too. But we need to get going. Mom? What is it, Sugar Fangs? I hear voices, Mom. Do you hear them too? I hear Richard's voice calling out over the others. We need to hurry now. I hear him too, but I don't understand why we have to help him. He never wants to help us. He does sometimes keep us away from each other. It's like he doesn't want us to be together. The prince is right, Mom. I'm not disagreeing with you, Sugar Fangs. But that's a big person's problem. And I'll take care of it. We need to keep moving, Pumpkin. While Mom works, Halsey will come up with another riddle. Sound good? All right. Tons of evidence. Do you know if the team from Forensics LPU has shown up yet? No, I don't. I need them to process the briefcase I found. And the invoice that was with it. An invoice? Yeah, for some glass tubes. Addressed to some warehouse over on Cellar Street. Shit, there's a red salon in that district. We've got to hand it all over to the feds. I can do it if... I already gave them the address. They'll probably send a team to investigate when they're done here. I've got to warn Hazel. You're taking me, Pumpkin. I told you I'd be a big girl, but it's really hard. I really don't feel good. Not even a tiny bit. It's all this blood. Me either, Pumpkin. It's not easy. <sighs> Let's take a little time out then. Weren't you supposed to be coming up with a riddle for me? Oh yeah. I forgot. I'm ready. I'm listening. Okay, but it's the last one, alright? Cross my heart, Pumpkin. So, riddle me this. If the child of Hazel Iverson is the sire of my child, who am I to Hazel Iverson? Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Let me think on it a moment. I guess. I would be her child. Oh, you figured it out. That was a hard one, too. You're not disappointed, are you? No, no. I'm happy that you're so good at riddles. So are you, Sugar Fangs. I love it when we play this game. So do I, Pumpkin. It's so much fun. And we feel better. Time out is over now. Let's go. We're really close to Richard, but I don't want to see him. I know he doesn't like me. What could possibly make you think that? He doesn't want you to take care of me. He says it out loud all the time. Listen to me, Halsey. What matters most is that I love you, don't you think? Yes, I guess so. Then we need say nothing more. I don't have to tell him you're here. Getting him out of this mess is already doing him a favor. It won't take me long, just wait for me here. Yes, Mom, I will. Hey there, perfect timing. You the explosives expert I called in for? No, no, I just got here. I'm backup. I'm a specialist in bloodstain pattern analysis. Blood spatter expert, huh? Well, you've come to just the right crime scene. Let me brief you on the zone we're clearing now. We've got a stiff in the room on the right. Looks like he died from blunt force trauma. Anyway, we've got orders to pack them up as is for the feds. Don't bother with the report. They're taking care of everything. All right, then. In the room on the left, there's a corpse we need to analyze. But I'm warning you, it's a real mess. The people who did this are crazy. It's all priority, just check the boxes. I'll get started immediately. Have you learned anything? I'm just getting started. Well, actually, it has been an hour already. There's just so much evidence to collect. You look like you've had better days. It's not like this is my first crime scene, you know? But none of this adds up. It's the kind of case you take home with you. What do you mean? Go figure. What's with all these bodies in various states of decay? 
This shit is gonna give me nightmares you can't wake up from. And the feds are telling us not to ask any questions. You have an idea why? Never met a talkative fed. And they graphed them poker faces at Quantico. But I can tell you one thing. They got here fast. Quicker than the blowflies. They took one look at the carnage and acted like it was just another day at the office. All right, why don't I bag this room? How far did you get? Examine the spatter trajectories. Get us enough data to calculate spray velocity. We'll need it. I'll keep collecting samples of blood and body fluids. All right. sure did a number on you. They're here. They found us. Before I knew it hit me, I had a stake in my heart. I've never seen anything like it. These mortals aren't afraid of us. Shh, gentle. You shouldn't be here. You should be at the Institute. Calm down. What happened here? The mortals who are here? It's the Second Inquisition! <sighs> what makes you say that? Are, are you sure? Yes, there's even a man of the cloth in charge of them. Monsignor Stanford. They mowed us down like so many blades of grass. All of us. So... They found us. We have to go on the others. Wait. There might still be kindred here. We can't leave them behind. This is insane. It's irresponsible. The prince asked me to find Miley. But I need your help. Miley? Well, now I understand. The prince had you released. Against my orders. And she sent you here. And you'd rather obey her? She's using you! There's no way I'll help. Ask her for help since you're here for her. I don't want you to go back to sleep at the Institute. Please don't leave me all alone again. And what about you? What were you doing here? Excuse Now isn't that ironic? The doctor needing help from the patient. But I was right, was I not? I... Yes. That's not the question. It's obvious that Hazel is manipulating you. She cares about me. I don't see why it's an issue. Does she care about you? Or about your premonitions? That argument doesn't hold water. Hazel's not the first person to take an interest in our gifts. Princes have always sought glimpses of tomorrow to better rule their domains. Take Quentin King, for example. Yes, I know. She wants to separate you from me, I'm sure of it. What has she been telling you about me? Mom, Mom, you're not going to tell him about me, right? He never wants us to be together. Hazel told me that she trusted me. You do well not to return the favor. Why is that? You don't release a patient from a Markovian Institute to run a few errands. Ugh, you always see the bad in everything. Your gifts? can be particularly useful to her. Keep it in mind. I just know it's a good thing that she likes us. Well, you, particularly. Right, it's a good thing I keep my emergency kit at the Prince's apartments. Why? I'll give you a dose once we're back there. That should be enough to get you back to the Institute. You see? I knew it. He's always scolding us. I miss that I wouldn't ever go back. But first... I need to finish what I came here to do. That's not how it works. You can't just interrupt your treatment whenever you feel like it. Richard! I'm fine. Since I can't diagnose it, I'll take your word for it. Hazel should have respected my instructions. What do you mean? 
She should have followed the treatment I prescribed for you, that's all. This issue is not over. I will have words with her. Let's get out of here. You go ahead. I'll catch up with you. Alicia, that's not what you I- You want me to trust you, but you don't trust me. It's not that. I'm... I'm just worried about you. Get going. The clock is ticking. You can, at the very least, let me help you. Here, with this, you should be able to temporarily impersonate anyone. I'll find Miley and catch up to you, okay? She was with me when they attacked us. She was? Yes, she was injured, but she managed to escape down the hallway. I heard them capture her. I can still sense her. She's hurt. But she's still here. Thank you. Come on, we don't have a minute to spare. Oh, and tell them they have the address of the Red Salon on Cellar Street. We should expect a second attack there. I must inform the court. Be careful. I'll be counting. So, has forensics processed the bedrooms? Yeah, I think so. They, uh... You... think so? Isn't there anyone here that can inform me about anything? I've been asking for an hour. I must give Monsignor an update detailing how long this is going to take. Let's not keep him waiting, then. But the local police are very... Just tell them Agent Olsen sent you. And we will see how high they are willing to jump. We still have bodies to evacuate and samples to recover. You bet. You can count on me. We have to evacuate these three containers. Where are you evacuating them to? Long Island. Monsignor Stanford's orders. So that's where they're hiding, then. I wonder why all the trouble. He wants to take his time with those specimens. He won't have time for it here. Anyway, Whenever you take one down, just let me know which one, okay? I'll make a note of it in their file. I... Uh, sure, fine. Uh, their file, you said? Yeah. Monsignor brought their files over so we could check off the ones we captured. Oh, yeah. Right. And they've got files on us? It's a fucking nightmare. Those are Stanford's files. He brings paperwork on a job like this? Yes. So his novice can record whether they were captured or exterminated. Oh, if they have intel on us, I have to find out what they know. Uh, his novice is busy, and... Uh... Agent Olsen's got a lot to do. But he's handling it himself. Go put away what's on the table. I... Okay. Me. It will take a minute. Of course. you are, honey. Leisha, help me. That's Richard's servant. Natasha, keep your voice down. There are still people here. Shit, you don't look so good. What did they do to you? We, we hid in here. I was with a vessel that Richard had prepared for the evening. Carmen. I, I was able to conceal the door behind us, but it was too late for Carmen. We were followed. But I got that son of a bitch. Miley, have you seen her? 
She was, uh, yeah, uh, went out to smoke. I, I... Take it slowly. Hear me. The bastards who did this are still here. Just hang in there until they leave and... Too late. It's... It's too late. Uh. Richard will be proud of you. Mom? Yes, Pumpkin. It's all right. Monsignor, standing orders. No interruptions. So, Stanford is back there. But I just wanted to... It's too dangerous, and you know it. If you've got something to give him, tell Olsen is novice. Well, suit yourself, but remember I warned you. Just out of curiosity, do you know what Stanford's doing in there? Yeah. I think he's exterminating a few parasites. World a safer place and all. No kidding. They'll pay for this. Agent Olson? Yes? I was just thinking that it might be faster. If I just went to tell Monsignor myself. That's out of the question. He abhors being interrupted by anyone except myself. But I... I'll do it. I'm the only novice here. Novice? So they have ranks. It's for your own safety. Trust me. We know so very much, and still so very little, about those we hunt. I saw your instructions on the containers. Therefore... My research. Oh. You're studying the... Specimens. More or less. I prefer to refer to it as salvation. Purification. He's a nut job. And a complete fanatic, too. But now is neither the time nor the place to discuss theology. Uh, can't argue that, of course. You, you know, know that, that I'm a novice, like yourself. Yes. Yes, that's right. You think that Monsignor would let me help him? Absolutely if... not. It's clear that I'm the only person he trusts here. Hmm. He's touchy, apparently. And I'm guessing Monsignor Stanford's not the type you want to piss off, right? Indeed. But it is that same unwavering attitude that will one day save us all. These monsters are a corruption, and only the incorruptible can defeat them. Speak for yourself, monster. I guess. He doesn't enjoy it. But it is his calling to purify the world. And to think they say I'm special. Calm down. I can't feel my leg! Hector, can't move! Tell me what happened here. Thugs. Uh, armed. No, not thugs. I think they were military. They, they just opened fire. We didn't stand a chance. Who were they? Uh, it hurts. It hurts. Do you know where Miley is? No. I don't. I saw. Here we go. And Jara. Did you see Jara? She. She. She fought back. Huh. That's the Jara I know. But they didn't kill her. They took her! Help me. I. You need to make your peace. <gasps> I hate being right. Which one do you want to take down? I'm taking this one. You get that down? Yep. Got it. Let's go, Sugar Fangs. Quick steps. Is everything okay, Mom? Yes. Yes, Pumpkin. Come on. See you later. I hope it's Miley. Purification, huh? Then that's gonna take care of you. You're all gonna pay for what you've done.
Nothing you'll remember. No! Don't leave. The library. I've been here before. Radio Nationale France. Mesdames, Messieurs, le Président vous parle. Française, Français. C'est le cœur lourd que je vous annonce avoir demandé à nos adversaires de mettre fin aux hostilités. Non par faiblesse, mais parce que la situation militaire l'imposait. Dès le 13 juin, cette demande d'armistice était inéluctable. Ce renoncement vous oh, surprend. Off, please. Vous non. You were right. They caved in. What do we do now? They won't stop there. If Bordeaux falls, we'll be long gone by the time Bordeaux falls. I thought Boston had refused our petition for asylum. They have, but I've got friends in the London court who could help us. What friends? People close to the Prince. They're arranging passage for us. It should only be a matter of days now. We left for London three days later. The authorization came just after that. Oh, I hate to admit it, but... I don't know what we would have done without the Brits. We already told you which. He's not here. But I came here to see him. I don't have time to waste. I'm leaving. Oh, oh, no, you're not. It's not that easy. You can't just walk away, Morgana. I've told you to stop calling me that. For the king. No! Hold that Please, back! No! It's not that! Stop! <laughs> stop! <laughs> I remember it now. My screams, their voices in my head. It went on for three whole nights. Why put me through that again? What the hell is your problem? King won't listen to you. Why not? He's the prince of this fucking town, isn't he? He's a milk. Do you seriously think you can trust him? So what am I supposed to do? Just close my eyes and forget it happened? So I told Hilda about what happened. Em, listen to me. I know you want those psychos to pay for what they did to you. But don't confront King head on. Are you fucking kidding me? He's dangerous. Quentin has been weakened. If you humiliate him like that, he'll jump at the chance to make an example out of you. But I don't want to humiliate him. I want justice. They're his men, ma'am. If you accuse them, you'll be undermining his authority. Trust me, don't tell anyone. How can you say something like that? 
after what they did to me. I'm trying to protect you. Fuck you. My love, please. Leave me alone. Don't touch me. I just want to protect you. You Stop are... Stop saying that. They had their way for three fucking nights and you want me to just keep it to myself? Yes. Yes, I want you to keep quiet about it. Stop rushing into things without thinking about them first. Can't you see that's what got you into this Shut mess? Up. I swear to God, shut up. Just shut the fuck up. I'm out of here. I never want to see you again. I left Boston that same night alone, heartbroken. Do that to me. M.M. My dear M.M. I thought I had made myself clear. Me too. I told you there would be consequences. Destroying one of my closest advisors. What did you expect? Do what you gotta do. I see. M.M. Lewis. You are charged with the murder of Sir Pro Bono, Prince of Gloucester and Knight of my house. How do you plead? Guilty. How could you dare attack one of my knights? He had it coming. If that's your defense. Hilda, come here. Prince. Hilda McAndrews. Were you aware that your child was conspiring to assassinate one of my generals? I... no. I was unaware of that. But I'm sure that she regrets her actions. What? No! This entire incident has shaken her to the core. She wasn't herself. I know nothing can make up for what she did, but I assure you it won't happen again. You have my word. Your word. How nice. I'm sorry, but I cannot allow such a brazen act of rebellion to go unpunished. But I have heard your plea. M.M.'s unlife will be spared. You're too kind. But you will pay for her error. Excuse me? Gentlemen, seize her. What? And brand. No! What the hell are you doing? Let her go! For the insubordination I of your I'm the child. One who destroyed him. I hereby sentence you to forever bear the mark of her crime. You can't! It was me! I remember my rage and my horror when they grabbed Hilda. She was right about King. I'm so sorry. Come on, don't just stand there. Come with me. Please, Jay, I'm really not in the mood for this. I know, but you're not gonna let her spoil our evening, are you? Come on, I'm not gonna dance all by myself. Oh, you can be such a pain in the ass. <laughs> Jay, you really had a way with words, didn't you? What would I do without you? Are you sure? Yes. Oh. Look at me. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh my god. Oh. Yes. Yes. <sighs> Look at me. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, my God. Oh. Uh, 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 yes.
Yes. Uh, yes. I've been dreaming about this moment for six years. I never experienced anything so powerful. Ah, oh, the taste of your blood on my tongue. Your hands. Your teeth. It was... I could never forget it. Clyde, get Deneb. She got out. What? How on earth could no she? No time for that. Go get him. Out. I'm out? Oh, who cares about Deneb? Do you think Iverson gave a shit when she offed all our guys? Huh? Wait, Iverson, are you talking about the party? It... it wasn't us. And now she's awake. Great. What do you mean, it wasn't you? Don't fall for her act. She came here to destroy us. Don't forget it. What are they talking about? I'm not here to... We thought you were behind the attack. We... Just can it. You can stop the little dance routine already. It's not gonna work on us. So spit it out. Why did your bitch of a prince betray... You. You're gonna start by dialing it down. You can't talk to me I like... could care less. It's not you I've come to talk to. You've got to be kidding me. Where's your boss? Here. Miss Lewis, I presume. Osborne. At last. Well, you certainly are resourceful. Few people are able to escape from memory traps without assistance. Though I doubt you were able to escape with your memory unscathed. What are you trying to tell me? I do hope for your sake that you have recovered all of your memories. Otherwise, they're gone. The process is more or less irreversible. You've got to be joking. I'm afraid not. Let's put the matter behind us. Now that you're here and conscious, we'll be able to talk. Why did you lock me up? You represented a threat. A threat? I just wanted to talk to you. And why, pray tell? To explain the reasons for your prince's betrayal? The prince is... on edge. She thought you might have been behind the attack. But seeing your reaction, I'm guessing you're not. Hmm. You're putting me in a somewhat awkward position. I would like to take you at your word, but that would mean putting what's left of my men in danger. If you're telling the truth, you're going to have to prove it. The Prince pulled out all the stops to make this alliance happen. I have a hard time understanding why she would order an attack against you. And why not? She's been working tediously for years to form a union between us. Boston was Malkavian under Quentin King's rule. Do you remember what that was like? All too well. Lady Iverson has been working her ass off, year after brutal year, to bring the city back to normal. She's been of a singular mind to re-establish bonds with you. I wasn't aware that this alliance meant so much to her. True. Many of our brethren were in attendance at that accursed reception. The Prince has sent someone there to find out what happened. It was a dangerous decision, but it was the only way to get to the bottom of this. And in the same breath, she sent me here to see if you were safe. Very well, my dear. I would like to believe that you are not here to finish the job, as they say. However, the idea that your prince sent you to help us? Iverson may be many things, but she is most certainly not sentimental. You're right. That isn't the only reason I was sent. Just why are you here, then? For our alliance. I know these times are tough, but the Prince wants to make sure our agreement still stands. What agreement? 
What do you mean, what agreement? The union you were supposed to celebrate at the party. Be more specific. What were the particulars? I'm not sure I understand. You know exactly what it was about. Why are you asking me? I want to know if I can trust you. Or if you're trying to pull one over on me with your eloquence. So please continue. With all due respect, Mr. Osborne, I'm a little too old for pop quizzes. We both know the broad terms of the Alliance. I wouldn't be here if that wasn't the case. Can we just get down to business? What attitude? Hmm, fine. You're right, we've wasted enough time already. Let the negotiations begin. What negotiations? Look around you. This room used to be teeming with devoted kindred. We lost three quarters of our people. Hartford has taken serious risks. In all regards, risks that are not on par with your prince's commitments. We demand compensation. I see. You seem to know the terms of the Alliance like the back of your hand. You're more than qualified to participate in these negotiations. With all due respect, I don't think... Enough small talk. What is your prince willing to give us to salvage this alliance and right the wrongs that she's caused us? What if the prince gave you a slice of her city? That would depend on the neighborhood. Hey ma'am, girl, where are you going with this? Whichever one you want. Downtown? Within reason. Hmm... All right. How about Charlestown? Why not? Very well. We have a deal. I'll contact our headquarters in Hartford to iron out the details. Fantastic. Hazel's gonna kill me. Well then, it looks like we have ourselves an agreement. Hartford will remain under Boston's umbrella. For now, Iverson will still have to answer for the party. What happened, I'll contact your prince in the next few days. I think we're done here, unless there's anything else you wanted to talk to me about. I would like to ask you a few questions. If you have a minute, of course. Of course. You have any rivals in the blood business? Yes, there are a few. Melkavian Spawn, in particular. They had the market cornered for a good amount of time, especially in Gwyndon King's day. Even though I don't approve of their methods, I must admit that they excel in their art. There are few capable of producing blood so pure. Seems like your business has been turning for quite some time. Am I right? Indeed, you're not mistaken. Warlocks have always had a special talent for getting the most out of blood. Call it our trademark. There's always been trafficking, but what your prince is proposing goes much further. Combining Dr. Dunham's expertise with the skills of the Tremere clan, the result would be... Enormous. Precisely. I bumped into a few people during my... detention. Humans. Yes. Who are they? What are they doing here? They're the forgotten, the invisible. People who live on the streets. Junkies. Squatters. They wander in here by choice or ill fortune. Well, we do need blood, like everyone else. You mentioned my memory fragments earlier. Yes. You led me to believe that the loss of them was... permanent? Not necessarily. Memory impairment is a side effect of the dimension. How permanent the condition is varies from one person to the next. That's the kind of thing I wish I'd known going into this. I can only imagine. 
But as I told you, you may not have anything to worry about. With any luck, it should all come back to you in time. At least if it comforts you, I truly hope so. Am I the only victim to suffer the effects of your magic? No, far from it. Anyone who enters the prison is affected. Including you? Of course, but we have rituals to counteract its effects. I don't get it. Why do you target memories? You could have just built a bunch of high security cells. Believe me, all cells can be breached, even the strongest ones. But if you rob prisoners of their memories, they lose their very desire to escape. In theory. In theory. No, I'm good. Uh, very well. Best be running along back to your prince. I'm sure she's eager to hear your report. That she certainly is. Very well, Miss Lewis. Were to get lost again. As for the rest of you, it seems we need to start packing our things. Next stop, Charlestown. And like always, you've completed your mission. Like always? Those words don't come from me. You must know what they say about you here. No, I don't know. Enlighten me. Well, you have kind of a reputation. It's actually rather flattering. What exactly do they say? Oh, you want to know? I didn't think... Simple curiosity, nothing more. Everybody kept saying that Galeb Bazori has been in tough spots before, and that you come through them unscathed. They were right. Don't listen to gossip. Forge your own opinions. Don't worry about it. It's not a natural thing here. It takes some experience. Mens et manus. Mind and hand. That's the MIT motto. One of my teachers used to say that the only way to really learn something is by doing it. You have a lot in common with him. I'm unsure of how I'm supposed to interpret that. It's a compliment. You didn't tell me what was in those files you gave the prince. I don't see how that's any of your business. To make up your own mind about something, the best way is to go to the source. And apparently, Jason Moore is well informed. I see. You'll have to be patient, Fang. Do you... Do you think your success on the mission could play to our advantage? I mean, for- The Prince will decide your fate when the time comes. Being useful to her can't hurt. How do you feel about it? Honestly? I just want to get it over with. Like when you're going into finals? Even if there's no going back? It's a little late for that, isn't it? It is. Your child, Beryl Underwood, did he have any second thoughts? I don't want to discuss it. He's your only child, so I wondered how it went. Well, could you enlighten me? Beryl is very different from you. He always has been. I was blind. It won't happen again. Beryl would have begged me to get what he wanted. Your patience reassures me. I'm making the right choice with you. You seem to really have a problem with him. Yes, and that's why you must stay away from him. This separation between you... What caused it? Don't dig too far into it. You know this is something I don't discuss. That's too bad. You've already mentioned Meryl, and I told you not to do it again. Your interest in him is growing. And knowing him... He'll try to take advantage of that. Unless, he already has. Excuse me? Did you speak to Beryl? Don't lie to me. Yes. Damn it. He asked me to stop by and see him. I'm going to have a word with him. No. Silence. Wait here. <sighs> Any news here? Everyone is stressed out. I've never seen anything like it. They're all talking in hushed voices. They barely dare to look at each other. People and their moods. I'm not interested in that. 
I saw them take one of Jason Moore's bodyguards below. To question him, I imagine. That could be of interest to you. Say, how are things with the girl? Excuse me? It's Zhu Feng, right? She's not a girl. Things going okay? The interest certain people have taken in her has given me cause for concern. Maybe that's something you should talk about with the person in question. Do you think you'll embrace her soon? As soon as possible. Once the prince gives me permission. You met Fang at MIT, didn't you? Hmm. I first discovered her by reading one of her articles. What does she write? She studies the blue economy. To each his own. I don't even know what that means. It's about hope. A hope of making up for centuries of exploitation. Since when are you concerned about that? Since I saw Beryl poison our kind. Blood or money? I've never embraced anyone. How come? The story of my life and my unlife. I have no progeny, mortal or otherwise. By choice? Yes and no. When things weren't so strict, I could have asked, but I didn't have anyone in mind. Not like you and Fang. Now it's too late, as I've clearly been made to understand. Maybe you'll get another chance. Oh, you mean that after the SI is done with us, our overpopulation problem will be solved? I didn't mean it like that. But still. Be that as it may, I hope the Prince will allow you to do it. <sighs> I don't know. After what you pulled off last night. I only did what I was asked to do. You brought Jason Moore back here. Sifting through the rumors, it seems it was far from easy. <sighs> Indeed. The prince must realize it. She'll show her gratitude. I'd better be going. See you. Galen, congratulations. Why? Jason Moore, I thought nothing would come of it. But you brought him back. Flawless, as always. Sorry, things are a little hectic here. As you can see. What's going on? Code Red. We're destroying all of our files. Following protocol. You're destroying all our files? No, not everything. Obviously. Some information needs to be saved. The rest will be a treasure trove for anyone who wants to harm us. That's what's got to disappear. It's a huge undertaking. And of course, Hazel's putting major pressure on me. She's normally a little high-strung, but you can imagine how much worse it's become. What's happening isn't your fault. She should provide help. You would think Hazel would know she can trust me with anything. Without question. She has even more urgent issues to attend to. You can't do everything on your own. That's why I'm asking for more resources. How about you? Is everything alright? After last night, who could say that? I mean, you know, your condition. My condition? You know, you're the eldest among us now. Are you worried about me, or the void I'll leave behind? You're an essential asset for the Camarilla. You disappearing now would be one of the worst possible things that can happen to us. It's true that reliability is a virtue in decline. Don't leave us. That's all. For Hazel's sake. I've got my own reasons to stay. I was wondering, what is it like? Do you hear voices? Does it come at you all at once? It's more like a feeling. A light one at first. Then it grows. And grows. Until it becomes unbearable. It doesn't look so unbearable for you. I'm hanging on. But you shouldn't worry about it. You're still very young. Listen to us. Talking about growing old, like mortals do. What's wrong? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's just the second Inquisition attack. You're the only person here who doesn't seem phased by it. London seems so far away. Now they're here. They're destroying the people we know. I really need to get back to work. Good luck. Be overwhelmed, and I'm not the only one who thinks so. I've always done my best to keep her from screwing things up. Do you have any evidence to support what you're suggesting? She doesn't know Deneb the way I do. She wouldn't listen to my warning. After what happened last night, I'm not sure you realize just- And I suppose you have the solution? There's interesting stuff going on in other places. Boston's not the center of the universe. 
We don't know who can be trusted. This is no time to lead. Just look at what happened. You won't be any safer there. It's just a starting point. If you leave, Hazel will catch up with you. What do you mean? You know, she doesn't like people who have been disloyal. Especially now. Be careful. Goodbye, Caleb. Soldier is on furlough. Not for long, I'm afraid. The Prince will undoubtedly have some new task for me. At least she trusts you. She hardly speaks to her primogen. Even Beryl is in the dark. He's not used to that. It'll be good for him. I heard you were doing business with him. It's something to do with the Rosemont Society, my foundation. Why? Now is not the time to be hiding things, given the circumstances. If the Prince were to hear about shady business dealings, heads would roll. She wouldn't take someone's head over so little. We're taking advantage of a springboard for young artists in order to improve our profits. In other words, you're rigging a competition to make money. Bravo. You know how to read between the lines. I call it like I see it. Coming from you. All I can tell you is that Beryl's really the one who is in charge of it. Are you still not talking? You could say that. Any regrets? I'm planning to make up for it with Fang. Oh, so that's why you've become attached to that girl. I'm not attached to her. She's an asset for the Camarilla, and a necessary balance to temper Beryl's wicked games. Personally, I find that giving a child so much power is dangerous. The problem is that you have to watch them all the time, otherwise they end up making a mess of things. But trying to influence them is pointless. You must be subtle about it, that's all. I give a mem just enough freedom so that she doesn't completely hate me. But I know exactly how to make her do whatever I want. Do you really think you'll have time to embrace Fang? What do you mean? Well, with all the elders gone, who knows who'll be next? That's not something I'm willing to discuss with you. Suit yourself. No, excuse me, I have to go. Of course. Jason Moore's bodyguard? Yes, Mr. Bazori. I've got some questions for you. I've already answered so many questions. You weren't with Moore yesterday. You went against standing orders. No, he sent me to his office. Why? I was supposed to pick up some files. He was being really weird, like he was stalling for time. You were supposed to bring him here, weren't you? Yeah, but he said he had to get some documents from his place, and then he sent me to his office. At the time, I didn't think too much of it, but looking back on it, he was really doing everything he could not to leave with us. You should have been more attentive. What happened once you got to his office? I had a hard time finding what he wanted. He wasn't very clear about where I'd be able to find some specific invoices. You lost precious time. You weren't his hand servant. When I came back, the police had the whole place roped off, so I came straight here. And since then, I've done nothing but answer questions and wait. How naive. Moore was at the party. So were you. Yeah, I, uh... I don't like to talk about it. You don't really have a choice. Like I told the others, I don't really remember precisely what happened. It's all a blur. It happened so fast, and they almost got us! They came from all sides, and there was a stench of burned flesh and gunpowder. I'd seen a lot of things before, but that... It was unbearable. I don't know how we made it out. I don't know. Nothing before that. I don't remember. I'm sorry. Do you know what's going to happen next? I have no idea. Nobody's telling me anything. Do you know? The Prince will determine your fate. When she has time. I'm not a high priority, am I? I wouldn't be in a hurry if I were you. I could still be useful to the Camarilla. Please. I'm not the one who needs to hear it. I must leave you. I heard you brought more back. That's right. Thank you. Makes me feel a little less like I failed my mission. Jason. What are you doing here? Calm down. I'm not here to hurt you. That's been done already. My wife is dead. And so is my daughter. Do you know what it's like to lose a child? June. Do you have any proof of her death? 
No. But if she's not dead, then maybe it's worse. Let's finish this. You were warned. You should have done everything in your power to avoid this. Fuck you! You have the right to hate us. But we're going to find out who was behind this, and we'll make them pay. Happy to see you, Galeb. We don't usually let anybody down here, but I can bend the rules for you. To what do I owe this honor? I need you. Some things come up. On the night of the attack, someone sent a message to an unauthorized recipient. You know who it was? Not now, but I will soon enough. Otherwise, the prince will have my head. Caleb, I need your help. I get the feeling that it's all connected. It's too huge to be a coincidence. Do you suspect anyone in particular? Jara Drory. Easy to accuse someone who's not here to defend herself. Yes, and I might have it all wrong. But I wouldn't accuse her unless I had serious doubts. Think it through carefully. For starters, she's one of the few who knows how the system works. She'd be able to cover her tracks, wouldn't she? Maybe. But maybe she made a mistake. There's something else. You brought more back here. We learned a lot from him. Like what? Did you know he'd been in touch with Jara about his family's disappearance? What's strange about having contacted her? Well, it sure didn't seem like she was in a hurry to do anything about it, that's all. I might be reading too much into this, Caleb, but I'd say that under normal circumstances, if the entire family of the guy who handles your money goes missing, it warrants more than a I look into it. According to our intel, Jara may have been captured. <laughs> she was caught in her own trap. Anyways, there's a lot of fishy stuff going on here, and the least we can do is try to understand how it all fits together. In my place, under the current circumstances, I can't really go poking my nose in her business. And I can. Nobody will bother you. I'm not asking for much. Just take a look in Jara's room to see if you can find anything that ties her to any of this. And if you could do it quickly. Why? Because I'm about to erase a ton of data. It's the Code Red protocol. And since Jara vanished, the Prince wants her personal data to disappear along with her. That doesn't give us much time. No. I'd rather not cast suspicions on our head of security on the basis of vague hunches. But- I said no, Caius. You won't talk to anyone about this, at least, will you? We'll see. I just want to keep us safe. I said we'll see. Goodbye. You? Here? How extraordinarily rare. To what do I owe the honor? Enough, Beryl. Did you speak with Feng? I'm not one to keep an eye on the comings and goings of your retainers. Did you speak to her? So much fuss about nothing. You know very well what she is to me, and what she'll be soon. If the Prince authorizes it... Uh... It's only a matter of time. I sincerely hope so. I ran into her recently, it's true, but we hardly said a word to one another. Stop it right now. I know you saw Fang. Right here. I already told you not to speak to her again. Come again? Don't try to deny it. You spoke to her. Fine. She came here. I don't see what the problem is. What exactly is driving you? Unlike you, I don't try to control the lives of those around me. Feng still enjoys a certain degree of freedom, doesn't she, to choose whom she sees? We ran into each other by accident, and we didn't speak for long. I spoke with her. She told me that you summoned her. Summoned? <laughs> Please be serious. I don't summon people. No, that's not your style. 
I did ask her to stop by. There was no obligation, none whatsoever. And I don't think she regretted our meeting at all. I really don't see the harm in it. It's not your business to understand. I'd really like to, though. I just wanted to give her some advice. To help guide her through this brave, dangerous new world. When it comes to that, I don't think you're doing enough. Am I mistaken? You needn't worry. She's been introduced to everyone. I don't intend to leave her defenseless among the drooling predators skulking in the corners. And she might just surprise you. I'm sure she will. She's worth far more than your estimations. Is she worth more than me? Are you sure you want an answer to that? All right, all right. I never took you for the fatherly sort. But I guess anyone at any age is vulnerable to the winds of change. Your concern for Fang is to your credit. It really is. However, I can't help making comparisons with my own past experiences. You shouldn't. It was long ago, I admit. But I'm still your only child. You're jealous. I'm not jealous. Although I do regret the unfortunate turn our relationship has taken. I'm worried about Fang, honestly. You would worry too if you were in my shoes. I just want to make sure she doesn't go through the same thing I did. The crushing weight of disappointment. The distance. The disdain. Beryl, I... I'm sorry. I made a mistake with you. A mistake? It's nest and left me to dodge the stings. I've been nothing but alone from the very start. I... You gave up, Caleb. And did you ever once consider fixing your mistake? That's why I'm doing things differently with Fang. I don't want to make the same mistake again. Ah, such eloquence, which never ceases to surprise me. You've always wielded words with such deadly skill. But there is one small detail it seems you have forgotten. You won't be there for her much longer. What? Think about it. You're the oldest person in this city now. It gnaws at you like it does all the elders. You can feel it inside you and it will grow and grow until you finally give in. How long do you think it will be before you leave too? I'd weigh your words. One might think you actually want me gone. Far be it for me to want that. Yet you seem so eager to replace me, even purring up to Fang. That doesn't seem like a very loyal attitude to have. I won't let you question my loyalty. Then do something to prove it. Then we'll talk. Actually... If I understand you right, and I think I do, we're of the same mind. With a few minor differences. Is that so? We both want what's best for Fang. So then why can't I see her? It's quite simple. Either you do what I say, or I'll take more radical measures. There's no need for that. I'm sure we can find common ground. You don't come near Fang again, and I won't tear you limb from limb. I... I was thinking of something a little more... It's non-negotiable. I see. I'll have to settle for that. You'd better. I just wanted to make sure she knew what she was doing here. I didn't think you'd react like this. You didn't think I'd find out. Don't turn this into a witch trial. If I've acted badly, it was with good intentions. But I've heard your message loud and clear. I'll bear it in mind. Just keep your distance, and everything will be fine. Yes, you've made yourself very clear. One more thing. A little bird told me about your operations in South America. My dear sire, for someone I thought had no interest in business, you're remarkably well informed. Nothing can stay hidden from the court forever. Where's the harm in it? 
Your actions have consequences for the Camarilla that you haven't considered. I don't see how my personal business concerns her. She's already having enough trouble getting us out of this mess she's dragged us into. You hold her responsible for this? She's in charge, isn't she? She hosted the party. It's only natural to hold her accountable, isn't it? If the court were to hear what you just said... Ha! Huh. Do you really think I'm the only one who thinks this? You'd best be going. I wasn't planning on staying, be sure of that. It's been a pleasure. Please excuse me if I don't see you out. to see you now. Great. Galo. My prince. We were expecting you. How may I be of service to you this time? One thing at a time. I thought about what happened yesterday. Whoever went after Moore was clearly trying to ruin us. We managed to avoid disaster thanks to you. Thank you. Unfortunately, Moore won't be of much use to us. We're going to get rid of him. He's already lost a lot in this affair. Perhaps we could find another use for him. No, he's been compromised. I won't change my mind. You're going soft, Galen. But it's not more I'm worried about. I understand. Only the Hartford Chantry was aware of our relationship with him. And it's clear the attack didn't come from them. Then who? I have suspected as much for a while now. You must feel it too. Someone in the Camarilla is working against us. A traitor. It appears so. Who would dare to do that? You must have some thoughts about it. Do you have a name? I'd like to be able to tell you more, but unfortunately I don't. I'm going to find the culprit. It's my top priority. What makes you think there's a traitor? More. The party. The SI. They knew what they were going to find. Dana Lahane was sent to clean up by someone. All roads lead to one conclusion. Hmm. It is certainly disturbing. I admire your calm. I tend to qualify it as a disaster. I understand, but we'll make it through this. My faithful servant, with you by my side, we at least stand a chance. I wouldn't expect anything less of you, Caleb. Failure is a luxury we will soon be unable to afford. If you have nothing more to say, we can move on to the reason I sent for you. What did you think about Richard Dunham's file? Money that should be going to me seems to go missing whenever he touches it. Richard is far too important to me. I can't afford to upset him now. But if his research doesn't pay off soon, I won't hesitate to show him my disappointment. Did you read Jara Drory's file? I wish I'd never seen it. There's too much I despise in it. She never mentioned she was monitoring the Primogen's finances. Or this, Catapotis. What on earth is it? I've got no idea. It doesn't add up. It seemed important to her. But she's not here to shed any light on it. I'm listening. I've asked for your presence here because I have a new mission for you. Delson was able to track down- Are they hiding? Long Island. Yes, of course. An abandoned facility just off the coast. An old fort. It's the ideal place for a secret base. And certainly much more. Who knows what they're up to out there? <sighs> How is it we didn't notice a thing? They have abundant resources, and we're short on eyes. It doesn't matter. We'll find the people responsible for the situation later. Our most pressing issue is preventing them from striking us again. How? You're going to go there and kill their leader. As I've said before, you can count on me. Good. That's what I was hoping you'd say. When the time comes, I won't forget to reward those who've been loyal to me. I won't let you down. What's the plan? 
They evacuated the bodies from the site of the party, which is how we were able to pick up their trail. There's a small, nondescript warehouse at Jeffrey's Point. As far as we can tell, their transfers from Boston to Long Island are made by boat. To avoid drawing attention to themselves, they've chosen to employ only small craft. There are bodies packed in the warehouse waiting to be shipped over. Do you get the picture? You want me to disguise myself as a body to be evacuated? Exactly. All you have to do is stop simulating your vital functions for a few hours. It's risky. It's risky. But it's now or never. We might never get another opportunity. We have to try. The last transfer is probably going to take place tonight. After that, there's no way of knowing when we'll get another chance. I need to know the details. Let us worry about getting you into the warehouse. We've made all the preparations. You won't have to worry about a thing until you get to Long Island. We know where they are. Why go through their warehouse? Charging into Long Island blind would be far too risky. And with a traitor in our midst, I'd rather keep this to a small circle of trusted people. To avoid any other unpleasant surprises. And after that? Once you're on the island, you'll be in uncharted territory. You'll be on your own. Who is my target? Walter Stanford. He's the head of the Boston Task Force. He's part of what they call the Society of Leopold. Someone else will take his place. No need for you to worry about that for the time being. Your mission is to eliminate Stanford, and that's all. What do we know about this Stanford? Not much. They're very careful. He was sent from the Vatican. And he brought other fanatics with him. If he's here, it means that Rome has faith in him. And that can't be good for us. He's got to be taken out. What's the Vatican getting out of all this? Your guess is as good as mine. But it seems that the kind are trying to get a better understanding of us in order to hunt us more effectively. These priests have been our enemies for ages. They have knowledge. Putting an end to them is crucial. We must keep our enemies from unifying their strength. I don't wish to be the bearer of ill tidings, but what if I fail? Do you have a- ...to complete this essential mission? There's no room for error, Bazori. Aren't you worried someone will tip off the SI? There's still a traitor among us. The traitors, my department. You need to strike quickly, and don't let anyone know of your plans. We can't take the slightest risk. All right. I've heard enough. Very well. Then you should get going. We've already lost enough time. Very well, my prince. I'm guessing you tipped Bazori off to the traitor? Yes. Any news? Nothing since Richard's report. My city is in danger. Everything I've built, all the dreams I've invested, that Judas is a threat to everything. Not for long. You'll bounce back. Yes. Congratulations on your negotiations with the Chantry. Our agreement with Hartford is crucial. Your wish is my command. I always knew I could count on you. You're a true ally, a loyal one, a future asset in my primogen. But one thing at a time. Before we get there, I have another favor to ask of you. What a surprise. About what I told you earlier concerning Delson and Long Island. I've got a plan. Oh, I know that look. Hazel. This is the best moment to strike. That sounds like the definition of rushing into things. Yes, but we have no choice. Delson? We need to blind them. From the inside. They know too much about it. We have to change that. For that, we need someone to hit them with a surprise attack from within their compound. I wish that person luck. It's you. That's way out of my league! Hazel's not asking for your opinion. You proved you were reliable with Hartford. We need your skill sets for such a risky and vital task. That's precisely what's got me on edge. 
It's your chance to prove to the court once and for all that you deserve a place on the council, M.M. After this, you'll be untouchable. I sure hope so. All right? How do I get on this island? By boat? I doubt it. Coastline's under surveillance. So I swim across. All right? What then? Kaya's wrote a program that can help us. If you can upload it into their system, it'll corrupt all the data they've got in their database. Their systems, the archives, it'll all be lost. Allowing us to cover our tracks. It's our best shot at making it through this. You'll just have to insert it into a computer that's on their network. That's absolutely essential. Any questions? Your plan sounds pretty old school. There's no way to do that remotely? We've tried, but Leto's agents weren't able to breach their security. Their network's too highly protected. That's why we need you. I see. Am I allowed to take a partner? I'd feel a lot better about this if I had someone covering my back. I understand, but that's not possible. We're already taking a risk by sending a person in to infiltrate their hideout. Got it. So, let me get this straight. You want me to infiltrate the enemy base alone? The same enemies who just slaughtered half the camp. Quit whining. You can have help. Oh, really? Your task will not be easy. You'll need a diversion while you sabotage their system. A raid near their base, for example. That could work. Who will you send? I refuse to sacrifice any more of our people. Narks could do the job. Come again? You heard me. I want you to go see them and convince them to go with you to Long Island. You're trying to thin their herd. I'm balancing the scales, that's all. They can't stand us. They'll never agree to fight for us. Let alone on their own without us. They don't have to know they'll be alone. Lead them to believe our forces will join up with them. The SI is a threat to the entire city. They're just as concerned as we are. Send someone else to negotiate. A real emissary. No one else knows the Anarchs as well as you do. They go to your clubs, don't they? They know who you are. They know they can trust you. I barely know them. I see a couple of them once in a while, but that's it. We're not exactly friends. You're still in the best position to negotiate with them. Yeah. I'm not comfortable with the idea of sending them to be slaughtered. It's... despicable. It's just politics. And it's probably your only chance to come back in one piece. What if I refuse? I won't let you. Your conscience is of no concern to me. The only thing that matters is our survival. And too bad if it keeps you up at night. The true face of the Camarilla. Right then. Let's say I agree. You don't have a choice, but I'll humor you. How am I supposed to go about it? I can't just go chasing down every Anarch I know to ask for their help. There's only one Anarch that counts. They're Baron. Randall Thane? That's right. He's in charge of the various Anarch gangs in the region. I don't know where he is right now. You'll need to use your network. Hmm. I've got an idea of who I can ask. What can I use as leverage if they try to negotiate? Money. Favors. Offer them whatever seems useful. All right. One more thing. Don't tell anyone about your task. Not even your sire. I don't want the Council poking their noses into this. That will be all. I'm counting on you, M.M. Be careful, and good luck. <laughs> I'm gonna need it. I'm sorry I wasn't here to meet you when you got back. I was busy. No worries. I heard your little adventure with our guests was quite the success. Congratulations. Thanks. I was just about to go grab a bite. Join me? Is that a question or an order? Let's say it's a strong recommendation. One you can't really refuse. Hmm. That's what it sounded like. Please, lead the way. Very well. Is there something in particular you wanted to talk to me about? Can't I simply offer you a drink without you reading something into it? No. <sighs> Alright, fine. 
Your new mission has been giving me pause to think. I'm sorry, but I can't talk about it. Hazel made that exceedingly clear. If she thinks things are better like that, I believe her. For God's sake, Amem, I'm your sire. You should trust me, not that snake in the grass. Personally, I've never had anything bad to say about Hazel. Unlike me, is that it? <laughs> You'd be singing a different tune if you knew what I know. If I knew what? Nothing. You wouldn't believe me anyways. Oh, come on. Don't be like that. I'm sorry. You're right, you're my sire, I should believe you. And I do. We good? Would you tell me what you know? Please. Seriously, you don't think you're laying it on a little too thick? Not at all. You can be such a pain sometimes. Hazel's a smart woman. She knows what she needs to do to get what she wants. And she wants you. That's going too far. You think it's an honor, but you should really be worried. Hazel never does anything she's not sure she'll benefit from, which means she's got ways to make you bend to her will. She's careful to hide her secrets from you, safe behind her herald. Tonight could be your last chance to discover them. Very well. Let's move on. The reports from Richard and Laisha are truly frightening. I never thought I'd see a day like this. Predators never see themselves as prey. We're going to have to be extremely cautious if we want to survive. Do you have any plans? No. I'm waiting for Hazel's orders. We're dependent on her now more than ever. I can't imagine you waiting for the Prince to do something. But here I am, doing just that. No. You've always got a plan B. You're not telling me everything. I... fine. You in. I can't talk about it here, but yes, I've got our backs covered. Our backs? You're my blood, Mem. But enough about that. Hazel seems to have a few cards up her sleeve. Let's put our faith in that for now. You sure seem ticked at the Prince. We've got different political views, that's all. It's rather healthy, actually. There's nothing worse than a council that's enthralled to its prince. That I can believe. But it seemed like there was something else. What? I'm worried about you, that's all. I've seen Hazel spin her web around other kindred. I'm worried she's doing the same thing with you. Playing the cynic? I'd say you were just jealous. I don't want her throne, Amem. I'm just fine where I am. But since you don't believe me, go take a look around. I'm sure you'll find the answers to your questions. Just a bit of friendly advice. I wanted to ask you about something a little weird, if you've got a couple minutes. I'm all ears. Is something wrong? When I went to see the Tremere, I fell into a kind of... memory trap. What? Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Long story short, I lost some memories. Well, memory fragments. I think I recovered some of them, but I'm not sure. I saw our breakup again. Oh, wonderful. It was like I was reliving the whole thing, but from the outside looking in. Did you see anything else? I saw the night I was attacked. The blood bond. I heard their voices again. Their laughter. Mem. I'm fine. I know at least one of them paid for what they did to me. Yeah. Remember the night we learned about France's surrender? In 1940. Vaguely. Why? I heard his speech on the radio. We were in Bordeaux. Wow. You sure have a knack for remembering the happier memories. I didn't get to decide. They were there. That's all. I saw my trial. For destroying Pro Bono. You warned me about King, but I wouldn't listen. And you paid the price for my mistake. I know. It's all right, Mem. It's all in the past. No, that's not true. You still have that goddamn mark on your neck. I'm so sorry. I never meant for you to pay for my mistakes. You didn't deserve that. I... Thank you. 
It means a lot to me, but you're not the one- oh, What I wouldn't give to have him here right now so I can make him pay. I can imagine, but don't worry about it. Someone will eventually pay him in kind. I hope so. I saw my embrace. Oh, really? Yeah, it was weird. We were so happy back then. I was, at least. So was I. <sighs> yeah, that's all. I'm sorry you had to go through that again. I can't imagine how traumatizing it must have been. It's never good to go stirring up the past. Yeah, no kidding. Thanks for sharing with me. I gotta go. I've got stuff to do. Just a sec. I know Hazel told you not to talk about it. But please, at least tell me where you're headed. You're unbelievable. The air is thick in here. You can understand my concern, can't you? I'm going to see the Anarchs. What? It's a long story. I'll explain when I get back. I've really gotta go. All right. Be careful, ma'am. Underwood. No, Lewis, I don't have time. Save your clever remarks for another time. Where are you running off to like that? The Red Salon. Our prince seems to think the address has been compromised. I have to clean up before the humans get there. That's why you're being such an asshole to everyone? You don't want us to be sad if you don't come back? I'm trying to avoid another lawsuit. Now, if you'll excuse me... Good evening, Miss Lewis. Please, don't call me that. A man will do just fine. Oh, all right, Amem. Things have been pretty crazy the past few nights. How are you holding up? It's very kind of you to be concerned about me. I'm worried about Mr. Bazori, that's all. The Prince's faith in him has put him on the front line. I'm afraid something will happen to him. You're gonna have to learn how to keep a cool head if you want to survive here. You're surrounded by sharks. I'm used to being surrounded by predators. Then... You shouldn't be too far out of your element here. I heard you hated this place, and yet, you're still here. It's not that easy to leave the Camarilla. So you're only here because you have to be. Let's say it plays to my advantage. Did Bazori tell you not to trust me? I don't trust anyone. It's not personal. Your sire gives good advice. Oh, I didn't need Mr. Bazori to teach me that. I've met neonates who are more worried than you and they'd already been embraced. I know I'm not in the greatest position, but it's only temporary. You sound pretty sure of yourself. Galeb is valued by the court. There's no reason to refuse his request. Hazel could decide he's already had enough children. Underwood takes up enough space as it is. With all due respect, Mr. Underwood had his day. Ms. Iverson is a modern woman. I've got every chance. You haven't been at court for long. Where did you learn to hold your own with monsters like them? I think my job has something to do with it. What do you do? I'm in economics. I'm a researcher studying the blue economy. So you're a tree hugger? Something like that. I'm sure that a different future is possible. A future that's more... intelligent. And yet, you want to become immortal. Isn't that kind of a paradox? Eternal unlife and finite resources aren't really a good match. That's true. Unless eternity is given to the right people. And is used sparingly. So, you're one of the right people? Yes. I'm sure that I am. Your sire doesn't look like he's going to show up. He's a busy man. That's unfortunate for you. Zori's not the only person with the full plate. I've gotta go. It's been a pleasure. Have a good evening, Fang. You too, Miss Lewis. The feeling isn't as unpleasant as one might expect. Death? It's nothing compared to what eternity can offer. Unfortunately, I'll have to take your word for it. Oh, you'll discover it for yourself soon enough, my dear. I'm sure of that. It's unfortunate, but I understand you're not used to having kindred pay attention to you. <laughs> but there's been a misunderstanding. You aren't of any importance to me whatsoever. Oh, I... 
I'm sorry if I led you to believe otherwise. That was not my intention. I'll be leaving now. Farewell, Fang. I expected nothing less of you. Goodbye, Mr. Underwood. M.M. There you are. I've been looking for you for hours. Where have you been? Hey, Jay. Sorry. Hazel's kept me on a short leash since I got back. I was so worried. I thought something had happened to you. I heard you really did an outstanding job with Hartford. Well done, Mem. Thanks. Since when do you work for the court? Since Hazel asked me to. You sound thrilled. You know how I feel about politics. But what can I do? Hazel trusts me. I have to accept my role in all this. You don't feel like you've been trapped. She clearly trapped you. Do you know something I don't? It's a little hazy, but the Prince and April sure know how to keep their subjects in line. They've got dirt on everyone. Like what? I've said too much already. Bosley's watching me like a hawk. I've got to stay in line. I've got to go, Mem. April's working us to the bone tonight. Catch you later. See you, Jay. You. Forever and ever. Always you. The Anarchs. Mm. But I have to find them first. Hey, Pumpkin. What are you looking at? The picture... is scary. Come now. There's nothing to be afraid. You're not going to be afraid of a couple paintings now, are you? No... but... Yes, I know. It's Richard. He was angry, but he wasn't angry with you. You know... I don't think he is. He doesn't like me following you around. Yes, but it's because he worries you'll get hurt. Pumpkin, there are much more serious things going on right now. Those people who put us into boxes. And who hurt you. Yes, them. But don't be scared. Mommy's here. I know. I won't let anyone hurt you. Ever. There you are. But... What on earth is that mark? I ran into an experienced Inquisitor. I was caught off guard. Not a dangerous mission, was it? You brought back a souvenir. I'm still in one piece. That's all that matters. Where have you been? I've been looking for you since I got back, but... The Prince hasn't given me a moment's rest since I returned. I won't hide the fact that I was happy that you were the one to... well... That I informed them about the Second Inquisition. Yes, I can imagine. Everyone's petrified. I can sense it. He's lost it when she found out. I had a hard time convincing her I was telling the truth. I admit that even I... She's going to ask for your help. I'm sure of it. She didn't follow your treatment protocol. Usually, I give you your treatment when you awaken. You're not stable, Laisha. Enough with that already. You failed miserably with the mission the Prince gave you. That's proof of it. What do you mean? You didn't have a firm grasp of the risks. How could I have guessed that? And to top it off, you didn't bring anyone back to the Prince. You'll become more and more overwhelmed by your visions and your hallucinations. All this because she's afraid! Hazel has become dependent on you. Don't you think you're blowing things a bit out of proportion? Dependent on me? 
On your visions, of course. Don't you understand? She didn't bring them up? She did mention them in passing. She needs your premonitions to help her anticipate the future, to try to influence the course of events. She would like to, you mean. What do you mean by that? They're strange images. You mean to say they're symbolic? That's it, symbolic, I guess. But it's hard to say what they could mean. That's why I don't think it's a good idea to encourage Hazel to think she can rely on your visions to serve her own ambitions. Here's a dose of your treatment. Take it immediately. This will rid me of my premonitions, is that it? I don't have time to break this to you gently. I have to go straight to the point. What are you talking about? Laisha, Halsey isn't real. What? If not true, is it- You're the only one who sees her. No, no, no. Our family has a gift for seeing things. No, no, I... Halsey is my daughter. In your mind, it's always difficult to pull you away from her. That's why I try to treat you as soon as you awaken to keep Halsey from reappearing. He's lying, Mom! He hates me! You're either lying or you're wrong. I don't know which, but it's not true. Laisha. But, but Hazel, H Hazel sees her. When your hallucinations increase, your premonitions do too. They become more specific and more reliable. And that's what the prince wants. But you grow increasingly catatonic. Halsey starts to take over. No! I don't want you to leave me! Enough! Shut up, both of you! It's just you and me, Laisha. Oh, no. He's a liar. It's, it's not true. I regret having to inflict this terrible shock on you each and every time. Every time? Laisha, the prince wants to see you immediately. Yes, of course. Just a minute. I'm not supposed to be here. I should have left for the Red Salon already. Why? No, y you can't just leave like that. I have too many questions. Hazel doesn't like to wait. We'll have time. Go now. Obey the Prince, Leisha. Stay where it's safe, and above all, drink. <sighs> there. <clears throat> Leisha, I wanted to thank both of you for- The Prince sees me. See, Mom? Richard's a liar. Are you all right, Laisha? You seem... Quit pretending. Come now, Laisha. What's wrong? You've been pretending to see Halsey since the very beginning. Why did you lie to me? Lie to you? I didn't lie to you. Halsey is part of... And I accept you just the way you are. That's all. So, we're inseparable? Like two peas in a pod? <laughs> yes. Like two peas in a pod, sweetie. <sighs> Mom? What's wrong? It's all right. It's just, I need to talk to Richard, Pumpkin. Ben? No, we're happy together. It's not just you. The hallway. My memory. He has to explain this. I want to understand. All right. As long as we're together. Gently. We'll deal with him tomorrow.
Delson wasn't wrong. Now, how to find Stanford? A clearance implant required. That doesn't work on corpses. I can fix that. They don't know everything about us yet. Hey! Who are you? You shouldn't be on this floor. Identify yourself immediately, or I'm calling security. It's entirely normal for me to be here. You have nothing to worry about. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a little stressed out. Usually the men in suits stay downstairs. But you seem different. In a good way. Not like those Vatican guys, but I shouldn't say anything. You seem nervous. Is everything all right? Not really. Ever since those nut jobs took over, they've been acting like they run the place. Without a red implant, you can't do anything around here anymore. And I don't think your colleagues appreciate being kept in the dark. Before they came here and changed everything, it was actually pretty simple. What do you mean? Now there are tons more clearance levels. They're really proud of that downstairs. But the truth is, there are tons of errors all the time, and everyone has to update their implants constantly. Is that why mine doesn't work on the closet? Is that the first time it's happened to you? Unbelievable! What do I need to do? Just like everyone else, we're following procedure. My question isn't about the protocol, but what you can do to help a colleague in need. Yeah, I get it. I've got a bunch of green implants in the safe in my office. The code is 423. You can take one, but you have to remember to bring it back. Can you remind me how it works? Go to any implant machine. It's really easy. There are instructions if you need them. Thank you. Of course. Don't move! Easy there, soldier. I've got to- On your knees! Hands behind your head! You don't know who you're dealing with. On your knees, I said! Now! He resisted. How? I have important information to pass on. It's urgent. I have to check. Nobody told me. Not surprising. I have an implant. Let me identify myself. We've already wasted enough time. Get in there! Scan your implant. There's a red implant. It might be the one I'm looking for. Excuse me. If you're looking for a little light reading, this is not the place. I'm looking for something a little different. Can I help you? The person in charge here. If I needed to talk to him, how would I go about doing it? It's not easy. In general, Father Joseph doesn't leave the conservation area until he has finished his work. If he's restoring something, it can take a long time. He locks himself in with everything he needs, food and drink, and we don't see him again until he's done. What happens if there's an emergency? Look around you and ask yourself. What kind of emergency could there ever be in a museum or library? So he doesn't come out? That doesn't mean he can't be reached. He approves every request to borrow a book from the conservation area through a computer system. So, if I request a book, he'll come and hand-deliver it to me? No, it's automatic. He'll just approve the request. His work is very important. We do everything we can not to interrupt him. I'd rather you not disturb him. My job is far more important than dusting off some musty old books. I just need to talk to him, and he's impossible to reach. There's not much I can do for you. As long as he's working on his book, he won't answer. What's he working on? I have no idea. He's working his way through his list. Yesterday, I heard him say that he finished the authors starting with R. He was very happy about it. I see that we have collected a lot of things. Yes, and it can be complicated to find your way around. What are you working on? Sunlight. Burns them. End of story. It's a little more complicated than that. Yes, I imagine. Is it to improve the SADs UV lights? 
Yes. I'll be going now. A new face, suddenly overcome by a need for reading material? I just joined the department. We've got a few too many newbies around here, if you ask me. At least you're not from the Vatican. Are they causing trouble? They're a real secretive club. Information doesn't circulate freely, if you know what I mean. That's pretty much the opposite of my job description. You work with them every day. You must have gotten to know them pretty well by now. Other than Father Joseph Mana, I don't see them very often. Is he the guy in charge here? Yeah, he's in charge of the Treasury Department. A real fountain of knowledge. He's a very kind person who's got a very interesting take on what we're doing here. Well, I've got a lot of work. I can't find the history of the Society of St. Leopold in the library. A book by Albert Lee, right? I think I know who might have borrowed it. Who? What's it to you? It's an excellent book. And it just so happens that I need it. I don't see what's wrong with that. L. Gallagher must have checked it out. It's just like her to borrow a book without checking it out. She must be studying it at the pyre. It doesn't sound like you're a big fan. She's ambitious, and she thinks she's something she's not. And you can tell. That's all. I'll be going now. Ah, thus Cain went to Abel. Excuse me? My conviction might not be as strong as it used to, but I can still sense your true nature. My stomach is in knots. I'm not wrong, am I? And you aren't crying out for help? Should I? We could just have a conversation. Quietly. Why? I've been waiting for this moment for a long time. To meet a kindred face to face. Who knows? Maybe you'll also learn something from the exchange. I am Father Joseph Mena. You can call me Galeb. Galeb? Very well. That's a much better start to our conversation. Or an exchange of best practices. I consider myself an interpreter of the great book of your existence. And you are a fascinating subject. Just what exactly am I to you? A variety of guinea pig. Have you heard of Raphael Renzi? I've heard that name somewhere. A Renaissance Inquisitor, if my memory serves me right. That is correct. I didn't expect you'd know him. Didn't Renzi have a change of heart? Yes. He came to believe that vampires were creatures of God, and as such, they deserved salvation. He was burned for his belief. That's the Inquisition's solution to everything. But Renzi's ideas were handed down over the centuries. The Church may have issued the Florentine Decree, but the questions he raised at the time still have gone unanswered. An Inquisitor with remorse? Something like that. You might be exactly what I'm looking for here. We could work together, but you're siding with the barbarians. A scholar like you has no place here. You're mistaken about us. Our common interest is to understand you. Then you must be blind. What makes you say that? Don't take me for a fool. I've seen what your colleague does here. She dissects us like animals. Your definition of understanding baffles me. Indeed, my colleagues don't all share my point of view. Admit that we can't just stand by and do nothing. Vampires are a threat. Why should I help you? I imagine your study of Renzi is forbidden. Aren't you afraid of being discovered and burned at the stake beside us? Of course. I am extremely discreet. I believe that there are some who are beginning to have doubts about me. Maybe you're on the wrong side. I see what you mean. You must understand my hesitation. 
If you were in my shoes, would you trust yourself? You're not a sheep. That's obvious. But that doesn't mean you'd help your enemies. You made your decision when you chose not to call security. There's no reason to hesitate now. You don't understand the predicament in which I find myself. It seems so simple when you say it. But if evil is among us, it will be difficult to defeat. Like the snake in the Garden of Eden. So, I'll cut off the solution. It has to be done. I think I've proven to you that I'm a reasonable being. Well, you have certainly been surprising. I wouldn't risk coming here to eliminate your leader if I didn't think it was absolutely necessary. Indeed. If it's to serve the cause of justice, sometimes a sacrifice must be made. I don't know where Stanford is, but you can locate him. Chiara Favarone, in the clinic. She's the only person who has access to that on the main computer. Very well then. But please, no unnecessary violence. Leave, now before someone finds us together. Not so fast. I'm counting on your discretion. And I am counting on yours. A red implant. Maybe the one that I need. Ugh, tell me you weren't there for Favarone's meltdown. I only caught the end. Great. She yells at me in front of everyone now. It's her way of motivating the troops. There are less painful techniques. I'd be a lot faster if I didn't have to double as her personal assistant. I'm in the middle of a promising procedure, but I keep getting interrupted. No matter. I'd better stop complaining. You know, your problems won't solve themselves. Things can improve, but you have to talk about it. Favarone is a natural at giving orders, that's for sure. A bit too comfortable. We're not getting anywhere. Things were easier before. And she's not just anyone in the Society of St. Leopold. Henry, if you don't want to be the next body under my scalpel, I need those lab results by tomorrow. It's just a routine inspection. Could you open your locker for me? What? I've never heard of any sort of inspection. That's an invasion of my privacy. We've recently tightened up our security measures. You'll get used to it. Of course, I have nothing to hide, but... If you have nothing to hide, then it'll only take me a minute. I don't really like it. But I guess I have no choice. You can open it. The code is 1492. I'll be going now. Back to work. What the hell are you doing? I might as well throw that out now. Good job. Go get me this creature's cerebellum from cold storage. Here's the pass and the reference of the member I was working on. And hurry up! Long enough. I can finally get back to work. I need that. What? what? Ah! Implant was deactivated. I need to be careful. That's the key to my cover. Welcome, Counselor Favaron. Very well. Let's see what I have access to now. Wonderful. I can access the database. Stanford. Based on the GPS data, he's not far off. But below me, there's something flashing here. What did I unlock? A draft by Chiara Favarone. Senior, I am very honored by your offer to take over from you, but I am afraid I must decline. Our strategy is flawed. I've already told you that, and I wouldn't want to do any dishonor to your legacy here. <sighs> Chiara Favarone. End of dictation. Interesting. But I'm here for Stanford. It's now or never. There he is!
take him downstairs. Today is September 6th, 2019. This is confession number six, conducted by Father Walter Stanford. I'm being assisted by agents Hawthorne and Beck from SAD. The blank body was apprehended in our laboratory. I imagine you used one of your little magic tricks on the guards at the entrance to get inside. I don't recommend that you attempt that with me. I must endure this. Very well. Let's get down to the heart of the matter. Begin by identifying yourself. He knows more than he's letting on. I must be careful. I was born in 1710 in Constantinople. I had many names. Now I respond to Galeb Bazouri. I was Shazad Suleiman, the son of Jeanette de Bazouri and Ahmed III, Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. I have been a navigator, a diamond trader, and a cold-blooded murderer. For three centuries I've amassed an immense fortune and taken many lives. I'm a monster. What about you? I'm the man who will stop this. Your information confirms what we already know. Your kind are not known for the virtue. Excuse my unfounded mistrust. But let's not waste our time on trivial matters. You're a businessman. After all, time is precious to you, even if you have all eternity at your disposition. What do you want? I ask the questions, you answer. Things will be clearer that way. What did you hope to accomplish by coming here? My mission was to assassinate you. Assassinate me? That sounds more like you. A resounding failure, unfortunately. The night is young. And dawn will come, and we will praise the Lord for his mercy. Be that as it may, you manage to find us. How? We have eyes everywhere. You should know this, Stanford. Man is easily corrupted. Who? Your morgue administrator. Miss Kim. A Jezebel. She proved extremely easy to persuade. She shall pay for that. Let's try something else now. A subject that's especially dear to me. I know there's a place where you believe you are in safety. Since you know where we are, don't you think it's only fair that you tell us where you are? I'd rather be destroyed. You leave me no choice. I'm going to have to purify you. <sighs> I have so many more questions to ask. Let's see what I can find out from you. It seems we've caught another who's of greater interest than you. Who? See you soon, Galen. Lewis, over here. Hey, Saul. Took you long enough. Thanks for getting back to me. I wasn't sure you'd kept the pager. You owe me one. So, is it true? Are they really here? Yes. Ugh. I warned Thane like you asked me to. He's waiting for you. What kind of mood is he in? 
Worried, suspicious. Expect to be put through the grinder. We'll see about that. Any advice? Depends on what you want with him. Just don't forget that you're not welcome here. Thanks, Saul. I feel much better now. Is anyone with him? Yeah, the gang leaders. He sent for them before you came. Why did he do that? Why do you think? He's defending his territory. I want to see him. Wait for me here. Randall! Okay, you can go in. Mr. Thane, thank you for agreeing to see me. I've seen worse. You'll need to do better than that if you hope to intimidate me. That's what they all say. Saul told me about the SI. I got the message. Iverson didn't need to send one of her lackeys after me. That's not why Hazel sent me. Then why are you here? To... ask for your help. The SI in Boston. Nobody saw it coming, and it's a real threat. But Hazel has a plan to get us out of this mess. Us? The SI is as much a threat to you as it is to us. The enemy of my enemy. Can we cut to the chase? We managed to pick up their trail from International Place. We know where they're hiding. They've got a base here? Yeah, on Long Island. They're more prepared than we thought. <laughs> Underestimating adversaries is your defining trait. But we might have a fighting chance. What? The beating you guys took wasn't enough? The Prince may be a lot of things, but she's no coward. She won't give up without a fight. As arrogant as ever. At least she's got ideas. Not everyone can say the same. So what's her brilliant plan? She wants us to cover our tracks. Destroy everything they've got on us to buy us some time. How? By sending someone over there to damage their system. Me, actually. And you agreed? Of course I did. I'd do anything to save Boston. Then you're even dumber than I thought. I don't see how you're the- Big. An assault. You want to use us. I want your help. The court will be there too. Think about it. A joint attack tonight. Just long enough to wipe everything they've got on us. No, it's out of the question. Sir. We didn't leave the cam to better serve the prince. Let Iverson play her own hand. If she wants to throw herself on the pyre, that's her problem. Ceres, tell everyone to come back. We're bringing in the patrols. Okay. Forget Hazel. I'm the one who needs your help. I won't be able to pull this off without you. You chose the wrong side. There's nothing I can do for you. I already gave you my answer. You're free to rethink the choices you've made. And you're free to leave. You're making a huge mistake. God damn it. I warned you. I can't just leave like that. We've got to be able to make him change his mind. I've already done my part. Saul, please. You can't give up on me now. <sighs> Damn it, Lewis. Does that mean yes? <sighs> there might be a way. You're gonna have to hustle. Randall called the gang leaders here for reassurance. But they could be useful to you if you manage to convince them. Do you think Thane will change his mind? Uh, there's strength in numbers. You're the head of the Coterie, too. They know you. If you talk to them... And then what? I've already risked my neck for you. I get it. Are you sure that could work? Thane's gonna be pissed. That's the risk. Take it or leave it. It's up to you. All right. Let's say for a second I want to try. Who are they? Ceres and Ratha. She's in charge of the Domain's militia. He heads up a group of hackers. You'll find them inside. If I manage to pull this off, are you with me? That's my condition. I can't go up against Randall alone. It'd be too risky. Thanks. I owe you one. You already do. I don't really want to talk right now. 
Especially not with a chick from the camp. Are you sure you're all right? No. I don't want to talk about it. It's personal. I came to help. And I could help you too. I'm a good listener. You can tell me anything. I... It's just... The S.I. I have a family. Do you understand? My kids? Oh. How old are they? Eight and twelve. I don't want to lose them. Cheer up. The night is still young. We're gonna get those bastards. They won't lay a finger on your kids. I hope you're right. Camarilla frowns on having a family. Is that why you joined the Anarchs? Yes and no. I'm a thin blood. It was only a matter of time. Joining the Anarchs was a matter of survival. There are those at the core who find you disgusting. I think it's stupid. To them, we're degenerates. An insult to their kind. They forget that they're the ones who are responsible for creating us. I sure hope things will change for you. For things to change? We need friends in the court. But that's not gonna happen anytime soon. Huh. <sighs> you were right. It helps. Thanks. See you later. Bye. What? I sense fear. Why? Did you get a good look at me? I'm not scared of anything. Especially not you. You're pretty fierce for a rose. Don't ever forget that we've got thorns. <laughs> yeah. Saul told us about you. She trusts you. As long as she does, you're welcome here. That's... nice. But I'm not planning on sticking around here long. I belong to the court. Is that really what you want? You caught me off guard. I have no idea. I've never really asked myself that. But I'm asking you now. Well, then... I don't know. You should think about it. Thanks for answering. He's nuts. I'd love to take one out for a spin. All alone on the open road, driving from city to city. With no responsibilities, no prince. Mmm. Ah, still in one piece. I'm impressed. Your friends might hate me, but they're afraid of Hazel. They wouldn't dare touch a hair on my head. It's not just Hazel. Everyone knows the Black Rattler's Rose. So, what do you think? Must be a hell of a change from all those tight asses at court, huh? Yeah. It's not bad. Things seem a lot simpler here. Easier to understand. <laughs> Appearances can be deceiving. It's a far cry from their little intrigues, sure, but it's not all roses here either. Hazel's been clamping the vice. Nah, it's not just her. The gang wars are also a problem, and then there's the overpopulation issue. We deal with it. It's the price of freedom. Exactly. You know, your message earlier. Uh, at the time, I really thought you wanted to take the plunge. Or that you were going to join us. <laughs> Got your hopes up. I'm a little disappointed. I think you have your place here. You should think about it. Not tonight. I know. But if you have any questions, let me know. I want to go see Saris. But I need to know more about her before I go. What do you want to know? What's she like? You're gonna get a real workout. I've never met anybody as stubborn as her. She's loyal, I'll say that for her. What about her relationship with the camp? Hmm, non-existent. Like the rest of us. Don't expect her to roll out the welcome mat. I figured. She seems to be pretty important around here. She's Randall's right hand. She manages security in his domain. She and her guys are the only ones who are allowed to bunk up here. Where do you go home? I forget. Dorchester. Each gang has its own hideout. We don't get together often. How do I convince her to join me? Knowing her, you're gonna need to stick to the cold hard facts. She's a practical person, a no-nonsense type. You won't get anywhere making puppy eyes. You underestimate me. I've got everything I need. Thanks. I need to know more about Rafa. Can you help me out? Mm, not really. Sorry, he, he keeps a low profile. You must know something. Nothing you don't know already. He's a hacker. He's the head of a group of hackers. That's pretty much it. That's nothing. I warned you. 
His henchmen would be able to tell you more than me. I'm gonna go it alone. I feel like I'm wasting my time. Listen to you whining. Have you at least tried talking to people? No. What are you waiting for? I'll see what I can do. Rafa? Rafa? Are you Rafa? What do you want with him? I need to see him. Why? SI. Ring a bell? Tell me where I can find him. You're gonna have to wait. Rafa's out of town. Is he coming back soon? I don't know. Who's in charge here then? Does he have a second in command? Yeah, me. But I have nothing to say to you. Let me at least explain. Aha, I don't want to hear it. I have my orders. I'm sticking to them. But the court... Not my problem. Fantastic, thanks. Was there... anything else? Rafa, what can you tell me about him? Mm, nothing. There's nothing you need to know. A little paranoid, are we? You can trust me. I don't have any ulterior motive. You work for Iverson. I work for myself. I'm just curious, that's all. All right? I'll answer one question. Dane told you about the Second Inquisition, right? Is that why you're here? Yes. So you know that the situation is serious? Yeah, but I don't see what that has to do with... And Rafa, for some reason, isn't here. That's a little curious, isn't it? Uh... No. He's got the right to do whatever he wants. In the middle of a crisis? That's pretty negligent of him. Mind your own business. I answered your question. Now fuck off. Come with me. There. This whole domain, the warehouses, the docks, does it all belong to Thane? Yep. Seems awful big for just one guy. He's not alone. He's got us. And then there's Ceres' gang. Do they live here? That's one way to look at it. Thane shares the domain with them. That's generous of him. Logical is more like it. He keeps his friends close. Does Thane treat his retainers well? Um, well... Come on. It's just between you and me. It's just that we don't get to talk to him much. Never, actually. He ignores us most of the time. You've never spoken to him? No. We get our orders from Ceres. Thane, we're not allowed anywhere near him. I'll leave you to your game. Later. Behind these collages. Some of them, yeah. You're the chick from the cam, right? M.M. I heard some guys talking about you. You don't seem to have a lot of fans around here. I represent everything they despise. It's natural for them not to trust me. I don't blame them. You should watch out. Not everyone is as forgiving as you are. Oh, because you are? I don't have anything against you. We're all just trying to survive, right? Even if I'd rather see your prints burn to a crisp in broad daylight. There are a lot of you who feel the same way, and not just here. Answer me honestly. Are you here because you believe in her, or because you were forced to come? I can support some of her ideas without being her lapdog. In politics, things are either black or white. There's no room for gray. You're too radical. What did you expect coming here? I hope you know what you're doing. Now, if you'll excuse me. As you please. Saris, I need to talk to you. Randall told you to leave. He didn't say when. Oh, you think you're clever. What do you want? We have to talk about the SI. There's nothing more to be said. Randall was perfectly clear. He's making a mistake. The whole city's in danger. Don't waste your breath. I don't listen to the court's underlings. Now get out of here. Saris, just hear me out. Get out. God damn it. Hey.
I see what you're trying to do. Is that a threat? You're way off. I'm on your side. I want to help. Why would you take that risk? Well, because our survival depends on it. This isn't the first time Cirrus has put us in danger. And what do you suggest? An exchange of mutual benefit. Do you know why Cirrus disagrees with your plan? Out of loyalty, I guess. No, that's part of it, for sure, but that's not all. It's because of the Crimson Oaks. I've heard of them. I remember those guys. Hazel hated them. There was a time she fought with them. I thought they disappeared. Their leaders fled after the fall of London. Most of them followed, but others stayed behind and went underground. I see. But what's the connection with Ceres? <laughs> she works for them, and she seems to be pretty attached to their agreement. What kind of agreement is it? What do you do for them? I don't do anything. Cirrus deals with that. As far as I understand, she runs logistics for them. She rents boats, houses. I don't know what they're up to, but it seems big. If Sarah's works for them, that would explain why she won't help Hazel. Yeah, but I got a plan for that. It won't be pretty, but it'll be good for the both of us. You in? I'm with you. All right. Then listen carefully. I've got dirt on Sirius. Bank accounts. The kind of stuff that's shady enough to get her kicked out of the Coterie for good. Let me guess. Your files prove she's skimming money off the top. Am I right? Bingo. And is it true? That's not important. You couldn't find anything to blame her for, could you? I got tons of things to blame her for. But nothing blaring, you're guilty. All that matters is getting rid of her. If Cirrus is out, then I'll replace her, and I'll help you. How long have you been sitting on these papers? I've been preparing all of this for a couple of months. I was just waiting for the right time to make my move. You're using me. I'm friggin' trying to help you. What are you planning to do with your little papers? Can't just whip them out like that. Somebody's gotta find them. And for that to happen, I need you to help me plant them somewhere. Where? In Ceres' personal safe. It's in a secure room. You'll need this pass to get in. Great. Is there a code? For the safe, I mean. It's not a code. It's a card. Here. You'll find it upstairs. I heard you fuming over Saul earlier. I found some of her ferals skulking around my vessels. They couldn't get out of here soon enough. I'm fed up with them. Are you not much for company? No, not when they're making themselves at home in my territory. Before you friggin' know it, they're pissing on the walls. I'm counting on you. I've got something to tell you that you're not gonna like. What? It has to do with your second. Yardley? What's the problem? He wants you out of the picture. <sighs> Excuse me? He knows you won't help us against the SI. He offered to help me. In exchange for your head. Way. Do you have any proof to back up your claim? He asked me to plant some forged documents in your safe. I didn't do it. I've got them with me if you want to see them. That won't be necessary. Ugh, Yardley. I knew he was up to something. But for him to use you against me, he sunk to a new level. That's all I know. I guess I should thank you. You owe me more than that. I saved your ass. I want you to talk to Thane and defend Hazel's offer. I knew it. You might be onto something. But what's in it for me? What do you have in mind? More than just a fistful of greenbacks. What can you offer me? The court could open the New England blood market to you. You'd have access to the red salons in the region. That'd be a nice change from our menu of junkies. What do you say? You've piqued my curiosity. And my appetite. Why not? As long as your prince can keep her word. This is your first time, isn't it? What? Negotiating? No. Fighting. I've spent my life doing it. So you should know that you rarely win without sacrificing something. How many people will be destroyed tonight, if I agree to help you? How many of your friends? Are you ready to bear that burden? 
Whether or not I'm able to convince you to help me, I'll have blood on my hands. And you accept that? I didn't really have a choice. That's what I thought. You're not here because you believe in this fight. You're just following orders, that's all. And you want us to line up behind you. Hmm. <laughs> but I'm going to be honest. It's not about you. It's your prince. I know you don't trust Hazel. Because I know her too well, Randall does too. If you reach out to help her, she'll cut off your hand. What makes things any different this time? I'll be there to stop her. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see you try. Her primogen has the means to control her. So? Are you part of that band of thieves? Exactly. Really? Oh, God. Now that you mention it, you're a lot like them. Hmm. Maybe we could use you to our advantage. You'll be the one to take the blows. Fine. I'll help you and back your request. But I can't promise anything. I know. With you and Saul, that should do it. Saul? Yeah. She agreed to help me. Huh. All you're missing is Rafa, and you'll have a winning hand. Hell of a team. Dane will give in. I'm sure of it. Yeah. Listen, I've got to wrap up a couple of things with my second first. I'll meet up with you later, okay? All right. One last thing. If your prince betrays us, I'll destroy you. I talked to Ceres. She's in. Really? You've outdone yourself this time. Where do things stand with Rafa? I came up empty. Apparently, he's not here. He isn't? That's weird. I wanted to negotiate with his second, but he refused to speak to me. Ceres is on our side, and that's the most important thing. It's time to go and pay a visit to our dear Randall, don't you think? I want to look around here a little more. Suit yourself, but don't take too long. We don't have all night. I'll be quick. Come on. It won't take long. should have known. I'd heard that the prince's bitch was sniffing around here. How did you get in? Through the front door. How banal. I'll come up with something better next time. You must be a Mem Lewis. Tell me, why shouldn't I just put an end to you right now? It would be a shame to anger your sire. What are you talking about? My sire's been gone for ages. That's odd. Hazel looked like she was in great shape earlier. What? Shit. Did she send you here after me? No. I'm not here for you. No? Then why exactly are you here? Saul told me I should come see you. She thinks you could help us. Don't tell me she agrees with your shitty plan. How do you- I got a detailed report about your little crisis meeting. Thane was right to refuse to cooperate. It'd be a huge mistake. It will be if you don't help us. We're not allies. Never have been, never will be. So why should we risk our asses to save yours? You do realize that this problem isn't just about the cam. We've learned to make ourselves scarce. Scarce? You're hiding out on a fucking barge! How long do you think it will take before they come for you? We'll be gone before that can happen. Where? They'll hunt you down like they did in London. I'm sorry, but we're all in this together. Like it or not. Maybe. Anyways, the old bat is wrong. London! Vienna! We've seen what they can do. You're no match for them. You don't stand a chance. It's going to be tough for sure. But it's not impossible if we unite our forces. I know that we're complete opposites. But it's just for tonight. With you. The humans won't stand a chance. A lot of times there's a gap between the stats and reality, Lewis. Especially since we have no idea how many of them there really are. We're kindred, damn it. Just one of us is worth five of theirs. We'll crush them. One to five. Mm. It could work. Listen, even if you're right, 
Even if all of that were true, I couldn't help you. I can't. Why not? What's stopping you? You know very well who's stopping me. Hazel. She doesn't know I'm still here. And if she were to find out... Well, you get the picture. I've been working for years to make sure it doesn't happen. It was complicated enough before. But it's even harder now that she's Prince. My existence is at stake, Louis. And I'm not going to sacrifice myself for your alliance. I see where you're coming from. But I swear nothing will happen to you. I won't let Hazel touch you. She's the Prince. You have no power over her. I'm a member of the Primogen Council. At least, I will be soon. I can protect you. Really? A member of the Council? I don't know. I'd be hanging all my hopes on you. It's either that, or final death will come knocking in a matter of days. You have to trust me, Rafa. <clears throat> all right. I got your message. You can count on me to try to clean up your prince's mess. Thanks, Rafa. I'm not doing it for you. I know. But thanks anyways. We've got to get ready. I'll give the others a heads up and tell them to let you in. Great. I hope you know what you're getting yourself into, Louis. We won't forget you. I've got to get ready. I'll meet up with you later. But that's the last time you break in here. Got it? Got it. I was able to talk to Rafa. And? He was suspicious at first. But he came to understand the severity of the situation. He's agreed to help us. Well done. Rafa's a little rough around the edges, but he's a good leader. You did the right thing. So, what do you say we go see Thane? I think it's high time we did. Yes. All right, follow me. The Baron is expecting us. Ready? Do I really want to do this? Then again, it's either me or them. Forgive me. Yes, let's go. Behind my back? Yes, and now you can't go back. It's too late. You. Ceres thinks we should join you. Rafa does too. You turned them all against me. I wish things could have gone differently. Save your apologies for those who won't make it back. There will be a lot of them tonight. You have no idea what that means. You're not ready. We're leaving for Long Island, together. Saul and the others will meet up with Hazel there. I'll wait until they launch their coordinated attack to infiltrate the base. You're destroying this cell. Get out of here. I don't want to see you again. I get the feeling I've been here before. Sorry, we're closed. Olacia! I'm so sorry, I, I didn't recognize you. I have to see Richard. It's kind of a bad time. There, there's a code red and... I know. So you tell us that the S.I. has the address of this salon, and you come anyway! Beryl, you shouldn't be here. They could show up at any time. I know that. Why are you here? Why are you here? I came here to retrieve or destroy my things, and then get out of here as fast as I can. Will you be long? This has been an occasional haunt for me for quite some time. I've got a lot of sensitive materials to deal with before I leave. I suppose no one's volunteering to stick around here. That's right. Especially not me. If you see Wyatt, tell him to come downstairs to help me. It's an urgent request. Wyatt? Yes. A thin blood who works for me. He must be helping the staff. There's a lot of stuff here that could give the SI much more than just this bar. There'd be no point in running if they could track us down. Yes, of course. 
And if you see Richard, could you... I'll let him know you're looking for him, as usual. Do you have a minute? Just one. I'm looking for Wyatt. What has that degenerate weakling done now? He's gone and gotten us in trouble again, has he? I don't know. Beryl's looking for him. He was here five minutes ago. He's been running back and forth to get the kind to safety. Do you know where I can find Richard? Dr. Dunham? I've got no idea. He told us the SI was on its way, and gave us orders to clean up as much as we could. I was too shaken up to see where he went. Sorry. Okay. What were you supposed to do? Destroy everything that would give the SI information about us. That's all. Of course. But we don't even know where to start. What are you working on now? Vessels that were stimulated by Dr. Dunham. I'm holding on to them until we solve an issue with the kind. You change their emotional state? We give them Trajax injections to trigger emotions that make them taste better. Now I remember. That's thanks to Richard's work. Yeah. Our specialty vintages have become quite popular, so we can't up and lose them. I believe you. Actually, since we don't have a lot of time left, you should go see our manager at the back. She must need help. Okay, okay. I'll go see. Are you okay, sweetie? I can't find him. I was sure he was here. What are you talking about? Mr. Teddy! He was here! I know it! Hmm... He must be playing hide-and-seek. You think so? Yeah, all teddy bears do that. But what he doesn't know is that your mom is really good at that game. Oh! Will you help me? Of course, Sugar Fangs. I'm gonna wait for you here. I'm a little tired. That's fine, honey. I didn't expect to see you here. It seems like you know who I am, but I don't remember meeting you. Yeah, it's not the first time that that's happened to you. So I came here often? Oh yeah, but it's been going on three years since I saw you last. My name's Betty. I manage the salon for Dr. Dunham, sort of. Is there a problem? Why aren't you leaving? It's just that Dr. Dunham asked me to evacuate the kind, but I'm never going to be able to do it. A highly valuable donor has holed herself up in there, but why it's supposed to take her and the others? Do you know where Dr. Denham went? He must be doing the same thing we're doing. Getting rid of anything we don't want the SI to get their hands on. Like what, exactly? He told us to destroy the Trajax compounds, so he must be getting rid of his stuff. What are those compounds you mentioned? It's one of the doctor's inventions, a stimulant for the donors. The blood is way better with it. Everybody loves it. Do you have any idea where the doctor might have started? Oh, he leaves his stuff laying around everywhere, you know. But most of it must be in his office. It's on this floor, in the rotunda. Or in his examining room in the basement. You said that Wyatt was dealing with the vessels? I need to talk to him. Do you know where he is? He's been running back and forth to get the kind to safety. I've got to get this damn vessel out before he's done. Why can't you make the vessel come out? All the commotion has pushed her over the brink. Or maybe she thinks she's being taken to the slaughterhouse? There's no way of knowing. She won't talk to us. What's the slaughterhouse? Oh, that's what the kind call the basement. That's where we take donors that have been drained by clients. Or donors that have been overused. Mr. Underwood is in charge of that. Oh, he works here now? Yes, he's in charge of the accounting, recycling the vessels. Really anything the doctor isn't interested in doing. And he's very talented, I imagine. Let's say there are a lot of deliveries, but not a lot of money coming in. If you see what I mean. I do. A blue blood. Why don't you force her to come out? I can't. She's locked in the injection room and there's no way to open the door. And I'm not allowed to damage her. She's a vintage. I can sense that you disagree. Well, I'm supposed to deal with her, but I can't even touch her. Because she's worth too much? What does it mean when you say she's a vintage? They're the donors that have the strongest reaction to the Trajax injections. It gives their blood incredible character. A vintage. But when they don't get their dose, they can get out of control. This vessel flipped out and went totally paranoid. I see. But the SI had better not get their hands on her. Can you help me? She might listen to you. I'd heard there was a lot of compromising stuff on us here. So I'll see what I can do. Yeah, go ahead and clean up anything we forgot and...
Yeah, I get it, Betty. I'll do it if I can, okay? Fine. All right. There's a pass on the bar that'll give you staff clearance. You're gonna need it. Thanks. You've got to get out of there. We've wasted enough time already. Is... is that you, Betty? No. It's Laisha. Get out of here! Look, I can tell you're scared, but I can help. I don't know who to believe anymore. They're all out to get me. I know they want to kill me. Who are you talking about? Them. The Masters. And even those locked up in here with me. They all want me dead. No, quite the contrary. They want to keep you safe. If you stay here, you could die. I don't believe them anymore. They're gonna promise me tragics to get me to leave, but they'll give me poison instead. That's not true. I won't open the door. Leave me alone! I feel like I'm completely at peace. At last. Yeah, yeah, great. Now go join the others. Now! Yes, I... You're right. Your vessel's out. Thanks. I have no idea how you manage that. Wyatt will be able to make his last trip. I've gotta go. I have to find Richard now. Wait, a vessel just told me he was spotted heading down to the basement. Okay, thanks. Yes? Are you in charge of the vessels? Yes and no. I'm just in charge of moving them. Name's Wyatt. Laisha. I know, I know. I'm gonna make a few more trips, but there's still one missing. I think Betty's having a hard time getting her to come out. Where are you taking them? I'm getting them to safety. Some of them are worth tons. Okay, but before you leave, Beryl wants to see you. What? No way! Go, Go see Beryl. Right now. I... It can't. I said... Go see Beryl. I've got... Orders. I can't. I've got orders. He gave me an order. Who did? The doctor. Dunham gave me an order. I have to get the kind to safety. You saw Richard? Do you know where I can find him? In his office, downstairs. He might have left. Orders. I've already got orders. Shit. I won't get anything else out of him. Richard already forced his mind. So? Did you find Teddy? You were right. Look who I found. Oh, thank you! Thanks, Mom! You're the best! <laughs> You're welcome, honey. Can you keep him for me? That way I won't lose him. Okay. I'll keep an eye on him. I'll wait here while you do your stuff. Okay, Mom? Yes. Be good. I get that you're busy, but... But you decided to interrupt me anyway. Fantastic. Wyatt isn't coming to help. A thin blood and a coward too. We're all going to be in trouble just because he's scared. He doesn't know what he's got coming. Wow. Well, hold on. Why are we all going to be in trouble? Get out of here, now! What are you hiding, Beryl? You dare? You leave me no choice. This is madness. What part of out do you not understand? I'm worried you're going to make our situation worse. What is this world coming to? I'm a member of the Council. What I do is no business of yours. The SI is breathing down our necks, so this concerns all of us. You think I'm not aware of that, perhaps? Then stop making us take risks just out of pride. I'm going to choose to ignore your last remark and work on finding a solution. I won't keep you any longer. <laughs> I'm not leaving until I'm sure there's no danger with whatever you and Wyatt are up to. What makes you think I could be hiding something so perilous? The checks for the sale of the emptied bodies? They are made out to be an El Corp. Not to Hazel, as I would have expected. Honestly, I don't make much from it if that's what you're insinuating. It's still stealing, isn't it? Uh, let's just say I'm growing her money since she doesn't have time to do it. Are we done now? It's not just that. Now's not the time to turn down a helping hand. If I accept your help, you can't tell anyone about it. Ever. Yes, of course. I'll spare you the list of consequences, if you break your word. I can imagine. But I still think it's a bad idea. You're not the sharpest knife in the kitchen. If I let you help me, it could make matters worse. 
So stay out of it. Do you understand? Why do you need Wyatt, if it's something so easy you can do it yourself? I didn't say it was easy. I need to find a solution and... But you haven't found one yet. It's complicated, I'll give you that. Not really. You need help, I'm here. Fine! I give up! Ah! I'll never manage to clean it all up myself. So you're saying you... No! There's no time for that. I accept your offer to help, but that doesn't mean I trust you. We'll see about that once you've gotten rid of... Just destroy it. Destroy what? You'll see. You'll pay for what you did to us. As long as I exist, you'll remain powerless, reduced to this. Staring at the ceiling of this basement. I helped you without knowing what I was doing. Now that you're part of this, I don't see why I shouldn't tell you the truth. Ha! <laughs> you just destroyed Quentin King III, our former prince. Hold on. I don't understand. It's right in front of you. Congratulations, Leisha. Or should I call you Kingslayer? Shit! You made me destroy King. <laughs> yes, and that's just what all those who can see the past like you will see. You're going to make me take the blame for this? You're a real piece of shit. <laughs> no, I'd say we're just in the same boat now. You insisted, may I remind you. I might as well make some use of that. But why destroy him? He was dangerous. We didn't have time to evacuate him. If the SI had found him, if he had grown strong again, we would all be lost. What the hell was he doing down here? Hilda had Quentin brought here. Revenge, I guess. I didn't ask too many questions. She drops by regularly to shorten his limbs. I just sold a little of his blood on the thin blood market with Wyatt. <sighs> and they say I'm sick. Your constant complaining is unbearable. Fuck you, Beryl. <laughs> it's been a very profitable partnership, I'd say. Let's end it now, shall we? Has the Hartford Chantry had an office here for long? Long is a relative concept, especially with your memory. What are they doing here? Research on how to stabilize the enhanced blood developed by Richard. Oh yeah, that's part of Hazel's agreement. Bravo! You figured it all out. Do you know where I can find Richard? I just realized that no matter what I say... You'll keep asking me that every two minutes. Is it a disease or something? No, but... I don't know. You said something about compromising information on us here. Yes, anything with addresses, for example. The SI could trace them back to Hartford or our clients. Obviously. The Trajax, too. They can't get to our suppliers. Wow. There's a lot of work to be done. Whoa. What the... A lab? Shit. It's the SI. We've got to get the fuck out of here. What the... Mom? Hmm. Uh. Uh. Mom? Oh, 
Elsie. Uh, uh, what? It's, it's okay. No. no, wait. Come back. Halsey. True. She's not real. It's all in my head. If she wasn't real, that man wouldn't have seen her. No, not you. You don't exist either. If they hadn't seen her, they wouldn't have shot at her. You disappeared! I was doing better! Laisha, look at me. You're fine. But you have to find what you lost. No! I won't listen to you. I didn't lose anything. Huh. Richard has scrambled your brain so much that you don't even remember. What are you talking about? Who you really are, of course. I know who I am. Are you sure? If that's true... Then tell me, who are you looking for? I... no, it's not. Say it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. That's good. That's the only honest answer you can give. You don't have any idea what's going on. Because you've forgotten who you are. But you can get it back. Concentrate. You're like a jigsaw puzzle that's been broken into a thousand scattered pieces. If you don't take the time to piece yourself back together, the rest is pointless. But I don't have time! You don't have a choice. Take the time you need. Please, give yourself a chance. You're worth it. Even if I wanted to, I, I wouldn't know where to start. I can help you. Let's start from the beginning. Try to remember. What's your name? Uh, I think... <laughs> yes? Uh, I saw a name on a patient file. I think my name is... Marie. Yes! I knew you'd remember. Welcome back, Marie. It's coming back to me. Let's try something else. But don't think about it too much. Trust your instincts. Say the first thing that comes to mind. Uh, all right. Who is Richard? Uh, I, I always thought he was my sire. But he isn't. Is he Halsey's sire? Yes! It's coming back to you! You're making progress. I have one last question for you. You can take your time with this one. Who is Halsey? I'm afraid I might be wrong. I, I found a file on one of Richard's patients. She was Juliet, wasn't she? That's right. You remembered. That's good. Our name was Marie. Since they were too poor to pay someone to watch me, they put me in a locker during their shift. There was an accident. It took both their lives. It took them ten days to find me in the rubble. We stopped talking after that. They took me to the asylum. Yes. That's where we first met Richard. He was the night psychiatrist. I thought we'd never get out of there. They kept us locked up for ten years. <laughs> Do you remember his look when we found out we were pregnant with Juliet? <laughs> I named her Juliet after her grandmother. It's a lot prettier than Halsey. I never understood why Richard called her that in her file. I wonder if he knew who the father was. We were forced to flee. Yes, in 39, when the war broke out in France. Do you remember? The Nazis came for psychiatric patients too. We, we found a ship that could take us to Boston. But Juliet caught typhus on the way over. That was all we could think about. Richard couldn't do anything for us. He had to embrace her in order to save her. He thought it would calm us down. No, that's not true. 
But Juliet's hunger was overpowering. When we went to soothe her, she drained us of our blood. I was on death's door. Richard didn't want to lose us. He slit Juliet's wrist so we could drink. He saved my life. No, Marie. We died that night. And we became the child of our dead daughter. He said he wanted to help me. He uses us as a guinea pig for all of his experiments. When it goes wrong, he wipes our memory and makes us forget everything. We slumber for a few years and then reappear court, as if nothing happened. I trusted him. He's always used us. But now you know it. Again. Come on. Let's go save Juliet. It's Richard. Halsey. Where are they taking her? Conscious. Captain, not sorry to be back at the base. The unit that came back earlier told us there were casualties. Cassie. That's right, soldier. She did what had to be done to protect us all. Here. Anything to report while we were gone? The kid you brought back is already causing trouble. Halsey! Oh, they lay one finger on her. We had to increase security. You have to give your full name now. You can't just use your badge. Seriously? Another new procedure? Davis knows you, Captain. He'll let you in, no problem. Thank you, soldier. I'll be in the break room if anyone's looking for me. I want to be here if my men need me. All right, Captain. New security protocol, soldier. We have to record everyone who goes into or comes out of the building. Please give us your full ID, first and last name, so I can verify your information. Your name is? Shit. I need a credible name. I need to get inside. Then I'll take time to finish up here. That'll be easier. Suit yourself. Hang in there, sweetie. Can I help you? I heard you talking earlier about the little girl we brought back. That's not a little girl anymore. She's been infected. Yeah, yeah. Was there a problem? Must have been, because the security protocol changed. But nobody really knows what happened. What did they do with her? No idea. The SAD agents and St. Leopold guys are in charge of it. Oh. I didn't know that. You're going to forget all the moments in your sad, pitiful life where you felt loved. But... You have no memory that you ever felt love at any point in your life. Nobody loves you. Everyone hates you. Despise you. They mock you. <laughs> you have never loved yourself. I... it's... it's horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> yes, it's horrible. And now, it's your life. Hello. Hey, how can I help you? Were you out on assignment tonight? No, I was guarding the base. I injured my shoulder on my last assignment. I got hit with a block of cement when one of these things came through the wall. The treatment in the locker... It's probably hers. You were lucky. That's what I tell myself when I see how many assets we've lost in just two days. We captured a child during the op. Yeah. I saw her coffin come through. Uh, her what? You know, the containers we transport them in. Uh, what are they gonna do with her? No idea. 
What happens in the lab stays in the lab. You've never been attached to anything or anyone. You're not interested in anything. Not things, not people. Everything tastes like ashes and asphalt. Everything is gray and flavorless. You're incapable of caring about others, or even caring about yourself. It's like death. Yes, but you're alive. And for a long time, I hope. Were we able to bring anything of value back from this mission, Captain? Not really. No usable chemical samples. Everything was corrupted. Not a single human witness. They were all gone. They were expecting us, that's for sure. We're gonna look like amateurs. Uh, the little girl we found? That's no kid. Do you know what they did with her, Captain? Agent Olsen must have taken her down to one of the labs. What will he do to her? No idea. But there's a reason he's Stanford's right-hand man. He's obsessed by the infected and won't pass up a chance to study them. Uh, I see. Sorry to bother you. No worries. Follow me. It will take a minute. Okay, sure. Wanna go in this time? I'm listening. Danvers, Bray. Great. Everything's in order. You can go in. Oh, hurry up. There's no time to waste. Station. Why? Don't ask questions. I've got orders, that's all. You, you need, need to go, go guard the entrance, entrance now. now. Uh, oh yes. That's right. I'm on my way. None too soon. Hey, you can't go in there. This room is off limits to everyone but officers. Then why are you allowed to be here? I'm in charge of filing everything about the girl before we ship her out. Huh. Out of curiosity, do you know where they put her? No, I just put things away. I don't read the reports. It's above my pay grade. Come on, get a move on. What happened here? They supervised Operation Burrow from here. It ended in crisis management. But I told you, you don't have clearance to know any more than that. Okay, fine. I'm going to get started. Agent Emmett Olson. It is 07 a.m. on September 6, 2019. I'm now proceeding with the interrogation. Wait, Agent Olson! What now? Halbert! He doesn't look too good. It burned! Right, Halbert, what are you? Put down that weapon! I don't want it. Halbert? No shit, that's impossible! Whatever you do, stay calm. It's incredible. She's unlike anything we've ever seen before. Is it this monster? Huh? I'm almost certain of it. She must sense her stress. She's defending herself. I'm gonna burn that bitch! Get a hold of yourself, soldier! Stay here. I'm gonna warn Monsignor. That thing could start again. But he'll know how to control her. Don't breathe a word to anyone until we've got the situation under control. Come with me over there. Yes.
Richard. You shouldn't be here. Leave, now! My daughter exists. You lied to me. And even worse, you let them bring her here. My daughter. Listen, now is neither the time nor the place- Stop it! Enough! I don't give a shit about where we are, how dangerous it is, or anything else. You stole Halsey from me! You made me forget everything! Why did you do it? I did it to protect both of you, of course! You caused too much of a stir within the court because of your gifts. They're both your strength and your greatest weakness. No! That's not gonna work anymore, Richard! Ugh, your excuses that only you alone understand. Oh, what danger could have been so great that you felt like you had to separate us, lie to us, and manipulate us like you did? It... it's because of the prince! She called for Halsey's head about three years ago. She said she was a dangerous liability, and she probably wanted to put me in my place. She ordered me to do it. But I couldn't! I had to make everyone believe I'd destroy her. For both your sakes. <sighs> to protect us, of course. You have no idea what I'm capable of right now. So I highly recommend that you tell me everything, Richard. But it's the truth! Of course I feared for my existence as well! But I didn't give in! No, you're right. You just erased my memory instead. Halsey is far too powerful. She siphoned too much of your attention. Her gifts are frightening. If she is afraid she could destroy everything around her without even meaning to. Do you understand? Thanks to my treatments, you could still take care of her. But Hazel wanted more and more of your visions. Did I really have a choice? Of course! You could have helped us escape. Explain things to me. You don't understand. Halsey is a danger to us all because she can't control her powers. Because she's a child. Believe it or not, I've always been helping you. What about Halsey? What did you tell her? That, that you had been destroyed. I had no other choice. I had to find a way to keep her safe, and stop her from looking for you. When you talk about safety, do you mean hers? Or yours? All of yours? Well... <laughs> both, actually. But... do you realize the harm you caused her? Laisha, these feelings you both have, that twisted vestige of your humanity, it's your illness. It's what I've been trying to treat for all these years. I never asked you to do that. I trusted you. And you... It's the Second Inquisition, Leisha. I'm here on the Prince's orders. My assignment concerns everyone. We have to fight them. Halsey can't be our priority. The fate of the Boston Camarilla and your fate as well, is at stake here. And you're the one who's supposed to save us? I can sense your anger, but don't make a mistake. We'll all regret. Hazel believes I'm our last hope to defeat the SI and protect the masquerade. Your thirst for vengeance would lead to your doom and Halsey's. Is that all? I sense that you're afraid of me. You're right to be afraid. Yes. But I'm even more afraid of the SI. And you should be too. If you're the reason our plan should fail, you'll both pay the price. Just think. I'm going to find my daughter. And we're going to leave. After everything I've done for you. I never want to see you. Again. Do you understand?
Where will you go? I said never, Richard. Because I won't hesitate next time. Hang in there, Steve. I'm on my way. Sir, please, the blank body was captured. Stanford is interrogating it now. The situation is under control. Right, fine, I'll go with you. There's no need. I can manage on my own. You stay here. You... Oh, Come on, you wish. split up. I could upload the program to this computer. What have we here? Why isn't it working? Shit! I told you I wouldn't be long. Not a word. <gasps> Thorpe! Jeez! You've... You're one of them, aren't you? A blank body. What do you want? I need to put something on your computer. I tried accessing your network, but it's not working. Why not? I... I don't know. I'm not gonna do anything to you. But you killed Thorpe. She was armed. You're not. Are you? No. Then you're not a threat. Tell me what the problem is, and I'll leave you be. All right. Why are you doing this? It's better you didn't know. <sighs> Listen, it's simple. You need to go all the way down to the server room. That's the only way to spread your... thing. Tell me how to get there. You need to take the intelligence elevator and go all the way down to the bottom floor. I've told you everything I know. Can I go now? I need you to answer a few more questions. I'm on a very important errand. It's way above your pay grade. You have to help me. I... I can tell you're right. The party. I know somebody sold us out. Who was it? I... I don't know. But the informant wasn't working alone. I heard they had an accomplice. What? Got a name for me? No. Nobody knows who it is. They just send us intel. That's all. What do you have on us? Lots of stuff. Profiles, names, sometimes even addresses. Your snitch sure was busy. So then, you know who I am. No. Your face isn't familiar. What am I gonna do with you? You promised you'd let me leave. I'll stay here. I won't budge. All right. Alex, can you hear me? Shit. I'm here. Need help up here. Too many of them. Who the hell is Iverson? We need backup. We gotta get up here. We get... Shit! Saul! Saul, you there? Saul! Been neutralized. No, 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 no.
We just escorted Stanford to basement level three. We're on our way up to help. First get out of here, then Stanford. Oh my god, no. Make just one sound, a single move, and I'll tear out your throat. Please, I don't want to die. Then answer my questions. Who are you? What are you doing here? Sergeant Dern. I, I'm in charge of moving the prisoners. Where is Stanford? I don't know. I swear, he left the prison in a hurry. He might be in his office down in basement three. I don't know. Please have mercy. Who else are you keeping here? There's a list of who's in them in the next room. Which way's out? There's an exit at the bottom of the stairs. But the SAD's guarding it. You don't stand a chance. <laughs> we'll see about that. Now I won't get anything else out of her. What are you going to do with me? I can't let you live. I know what you are, dog. Then be very careful, leech. How did you end up here? By no choice of my own. They must have gone all out. Your kind are particularly tenacious. I was hunting in the Blue Hills. They had been tracking me for some time. I was careless. I wouldn't be so quick to chalk it up to imprudence. They were well prepared. I gutted a few of them, but they knew what they were up against. When I get out of here, they'll become prey. There might be a solution. What do you mean? We could come to an agreement. If I free you, you clear the way out and keep your distance from me. Work together? There are just a handful of guards standing between us and freedom. That shouldn't be too difficult for you. I'd rather take you with me to my grave. You're going to change your mind. That's highly unlikely. The SAD. They've tracked down your pack. What? You're lying. Like all of your brethren. The worm twists your words. Mount Greylock. That's where they are. Shit. What do you think will happen next? Shut up! Give me your word. I swear by Gaia that I won't touch a hair on your head. For tonight. I can't promise the same for the other leeches. That's not my problem. First, I'll need some answers. Damn it! Just do what I ask already! What happened? The mortals attacked the Red Salon! Wouldn't just leave me here, would you? 
Your honor. You dare speak of honor. It's not a question of my honor. You're my sire. Have you forgotten what that means? What about you? Do you remember? Of course. I tried to find a place to stand beside you. You didn't make it easy, but I tried. I, I truly did. I did my best. It wasn't enough. I felt so insignificant compared to you. I was nothing but your plaything. <laughs> it's not surprising the prince won't let you take another child. You certainly aren't an argument in favor of it. You, Galeb, are responsible for what I have become. I certainly am at least partly to blame. Come on! Open up! I don't want to stay here and descend into madness! I can feel it clawing at my guts. I don't want to go feral. Try to calm down. This behavior is beneath you. Enough! I don't want to hear it! I've already told you, we are monsters. We may put on clothes and disguise our deathly pallor. As long as we've had our fill of blood, all is well. Oh, the sire is giving his child a lesson. It's been so long. <sighs> I don't have time for your accusations. Then what are you waiting for? Let me out! Go. Find blood and get to safety. And I don't need you getting in my way. I'll see you at the Prince's quarters. At least they didn't destroy that. I'm almost there. Up. That was pretty clever. I'll give you that. What? I warned Saul to watch her back, but she trusted you. You bitch. I was following orders. I didn't want. Go fuck yourself. You fucked everything up. bodies do that to you? Yes. <laughs> My last job didn't go so well. I heard you complaining before. Oh, it wasn't important. It's just Paula. Hmm, I don't know her. Paula Nielsen. Stanford's protege. You look tense. Does she bother you? Only when she wakes us all up with her screams in the middle of the night. Why? She has nightmares. It's not the first time. Stuff from her previous life. We all went through some bad shit. But she's having a hard time getting over it. Despite Stanford's help. In what way does he help you? He listens to us, for starters. I was forced to do stuff that I'm sorry about. Awful things. Stanford doesn't judge me. He knows it wasn't me. I was under the influence of one of those beasts. Is it the same for Paula? No, it's even worse for her. She drank their blood. She's bound to one of them. She talks about it a lot. Keeps her up at night. Sometimes, she dreams that she's one of them. And that she likes it. What are you looking for at this time of night? 
I need to see Stanford. Do you know where he is? No, but I bet Paula does. She always needs to talk to him when she wakes up like that. I saw her go into the reconciliation room. Thank you. I'm gonna stay here a minute. I need to calm down. Can I help you? It's all right. Everything is fine. Really? Let's drop this little game. Excuse me. I saw your picture in Monsignor Stanford's office. And yet you don't seem afraid of me. I spent ten years bound to one of your kind. You call that a servant? I call it a slave. You're not from Boston. No, I'm from L.A., but my mistress ran into trouble there, so we had to leave. We've been nomads ever since, never spending too much time in any one place. How did you end up here? I found myself alone, for the first time in a long time. With nowhere to go, no reason to live. Then I met a man who spoke like a priest who said he could help me. So I followed him. What exactly is this floor? A safe haven where we care for tormented souls. It's where they brought me after my mistress left. I really lucked out. Helena abandoned me in a city I'd never been to, with no warning. Helena? Helena Vidic. That's my mistress. Does the name ring a bell? I've never heard that name before. She talked about leaving. She'd get these strange urges. Yeah, I know all about that. She said I was brilliant, that I deserved my place with her. She promised to embrace me. So why did she leave? Who was she for you? Are you kidding? She was everything. I lived for her. You can't understand what it's like to place your fate in someone else's hands. I... I was so dependent on her. Monsignor Stanford taught me to fight that. Stanford? What does he get out of it? Nothing. He has nothing to gain from it. From me and everyone else here. He's helping us. Really. Helping you? To do what? To make up for the pain we've caused. It sounds like you have a new master. It's not like that. What he's doing is important. And not just for me. Tell me where he is. He should be here. I wanted to talk to him. Where then? What do you want with him? You didn't answer me. You're afraid of him, aren't you? You're here to kill him. That's all your kind are good for. You know what I am. You cannot defy me. I might surprise you. I asked you a question. That's all there is to it, am I right? Barking out orders to your servants? You have no respect for us. I have a retainer that I respect very much. I hope to make her my child soon. Where have I heard that before? We are not all the same. I'd really... You bind us to you, and we become dependent on you. It's like a drug. Don't you have any qualms about leaving us behind? I'm still here for a reason. I will not leave without having taken a child, so that no one will be left behind like that. It's too bad my mistress wasn't like you. She most certainly did what she could. Many succumb, despite their best efforts. So you're no better than humans. All your promises about eternity are nothing but bullshit. Stanford's trying to save us. I want to get my old life back. You idealize your past like some old lady when the future could be yours. That's the problem with mortals. They're afraid of new beginnings. What sort of new beginning? Whatever you want. Time is freedom. That's what Helena said. She may have been right. Maybe you're trying to manipulate me too. Stanford warned us. He really cares about us. You, on the other hand, have nothing to offer. You're speaking to an immortal who's existed for more than 300 years. Do you really think I have nothing to offer? Eternity would be too simple of an answer. I can offer you more than you could ever imagine. 
You remind me of my former mistress. I could never refuse her anything. I wanted to see him, about my insomnia. He asked me to wait. It wasn't like him. He, he seemed preoccupied. He told me, I think he's in the hospital's chapel. You think, or you're sure? He said he was going there. I don't know anything more. Great. You will forget all about this conversation and stay here. I don't feel very well. I'm going to stay here. Meet me there. I'm going. I'm going. Oh my god, your face! What happened? I crossed paths with Stanford. And you survived? My objective has not changed. Really? What did you expect? You'll do whatever the heavens command. I'm quite certain the future has some surprises in store for us. Surprises? Your initial failure could be a sign. Stanford is a very resourceful man. There's a reason the Vatican chose him to be in charge here. No one is irreplaceable. Not him. The entire Boston operation depends on him. He is unique. You'll see. What if you were destined to meet him, but not to kill him? We'll soon see. But first, I have to find him. This path is yours to walk alone. Mine shall lead me far from this place. Why are you here? I'm just collecting a few things. From Stanford? I'm leaving. I've made my decision, but not before packing what I need to elude them. Go in peace. I hope we shall meet again. Be careful what you wish for. Goodbye, Joseph. All right, Stanford is in the hospital chapel. I'm coming, Pumpkin. You can never be too careful. I'm here for the virus. Oh, 
Deal with the rest later. But why? Don't have the choice. It's over, Jara. You are just postponing the inevitable. Hannigan, purify this poor creature. Of course. I have to find the password. I can't fail now. Second two, empty! We're halfway there! Hurry up! out of here now. Incineration? Oh fuck, shit, no, no! Don't come any closer! Or else what? You can't do a thing to me! You're terrorized by fear! You don't trust anyone or anything around you! People! Objects! Everything seems dangerous! You can't tell what's real and what's just in your head! It's a nightmare! Yes, yes, but a waking nightmare. Or not, you won't be able to tell the difference. You had been destroyed! It can't be you! Richard said the same thing about you. But why? He thought it was best for us, but he was wrong. So it's really you? Mom? Mom? I'm here, Pumpkin. I sense fear here. Where are we? What's going on? I'm coming. It's almost over, Juliet. That... That was my name. Yes. 
There are a lot of things that have come back to me. So don't you worry. I'm in control of the situation. What? Hurry! I'm still scared! Mom? I was so sad before. And then I started to get used to you not being there. And now you're back and it's all getting mixed up! Why? Why did you come? For you, of course. To find you. I'd do anything for you. Because I'm still your pumpkin? Yes. You'll always be my pumpkin. Forever. I don't want to go back to the prince because they'll be mean to us! And it'll start all over again! No! I won't let them. You... you already left me once! Richard had to say he destroyed you to make the prince happy. And he had to make me believe it, to protect us. I didn't choose to lose you. It was so hard for me that I... preferred to forget. I don't want... I don't want to see them again. Ever. We're not crazy, sweetie. It's the world around us that's crazy. I want to go far away from here, Mom. Yes, yes, we'll go far, far away. Together. Let's get some things from the Institute and we'll leave. Okay, Mom. That's what I want to do with you, Mom. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, it's okay. Oh, Halsey. Halsey. Oh, oh. Mom! Oh, sweetie. Oh, sugar fangs. Come here. Oh, sweet pea, come here. Oh, come here. Oh, oh. I'll never leave you again, sweet pea. Promise me. I promise, I promise, I swear. Come here. Oh, let's go, come on. He won't see me coming this time. You. How many innocent lives did you take to get here? It's time to put an end to this. I would be impressed if I wasn't so tired of all this. This time, you're alone. You can't harm me. None of your kind can. I forbid you to come any closer. My faith is my shield. To be able to turn us away like that, that's a rare gift for a mortal. Some of us don't even believe it's possible. You have failed. Not yet. You're not infallible. As long as I have God on my side, I will be. I'll break you. You and your faith. A touch of bravado. Now that you're cornered, nothing can stop us. You're done for. We won't disappear without a fight. The war is already won. We've proven we're much more powerful than you. You took us by surprise. But now we've been warned. The battle will be long. Resistant. Like cockroaches. Unlike you, we have all of eternity before us. Your pitiful efforts to reach me won't change a thing. What's your plan here? To put a stop to you. By killing me. We are Legion. Killing one of us won't make the rest of us vanish into thin air. I beg to differ. You are the cornerstone of this operation. If you were to disappear, the Society of St. Leopold would withdraw. We're not the only ones committed to this fight. If you truly trust them, then why take over control here? They needed guidance. You should never have exposed yourself. The Inquisition of Boston will die with you. No one will continue your fight. All of this energy wasted. Why? 
I have seen the consequences of your crimes. I have dried orphans' tears, tended to gaping wounds, calmed tormented minds. You spread your plague like rats. You feed off the human race. You're nothing but parasite! At least I don't deny my true nature. I know what I am. A creature superior to you mortals. But we're not just talking about humans here. You profane the very Earth with your presence. From the shadows, you manipulate the fates of civilizations. You bring famines. You stoke wars. You seek to take control of the entire world. And you'll be the cause of its ruin. In the past, we led empires. Glorious civilizations carried the banner for their immortal masters. Slavery. That's your legacy. We built far more than we destroyed. Can you say the same? I smell nothing but destruction in your wake. What would you have me do? Faced with a creature stripped of all emotion, who sees you as nothing more than cattle. I've lost count of the number of dead bodies and broken lives. Fire is the only path to redemption. Down to the very last. That may be what you believe, but there are others who disagree. What? The head of the SAD thinks he can use us to his advantage. And he's not the only one. Like so many terrorists moved like pawns on a geopolitical chessboard. I will never let that happen. It's above your pay grade, and you know it. I... must try. In the end, only one question remains. Why do you continue to fight when the outcome is already decided? Your demise is inevitable. Why do you refuse to accept it? You can struggle. It's the natural order of things. The fight will only heighten my primal instincts. No creature can resist the Almighty. I am here for only one thing. I am a monster. Your predator. That's impossible. You're my prey. A sheep that has become separated from his flock. I'm hunting you. I'm going to show you the price you must pay if you come after me. This is impossible. Now, you will die. Stay back! Deus meus! Father! Why? You... Richard, what are you doing here? Hazel sent me. I'll take over from here. She planned for everything. You best go back, best back, to, go back to see her. What do we do about him? I'll take, I'll care, take care of him. Tell her, Tell her the SI is under, is under control. control. Good work, Caleb. I wanted to thank you. Everything ended well, thanks to you. It's not over yet. You're right. But I won't forget what you did on Long Island, and I wanted to make sure you knew it. Did you have any trouble getting back to Boston? The hound you unleashed made things a lot easier. I was nothing next to him. I got off easier than you did. I'll recover. 
<laughs> As always. Now that we're both safely free of that mess, I have a question for you. It's about Fang. Are you really that interested in her? It would be a lie to pretend otherwise. She would be a precious asset for my business. I know you didn't plan for things to go like this, and it would be legitimate for you to get rid of her now. But think of everything she's worth, the things she could do. What are we going to do with her? My plans for her haven't changed. It's high time she became one of us. As you wish. I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, not at all. You've come at just the right time. We'll be done in just a moment. I'm relieved to see you back here, Caleb. <laughs> you don't know him as well as I do. Otherwise, you wouldn't be so surprised. He's the reason we're all still standing here tonight. Thank you, Beryl. I would have liked to tear Stanford apart myself. He might have been mortal, but he was able to resist our power. <laughs> he didn't resist you for long. We all could have gone up in flames. It's all ancient history now. Now we can focus on the future. What do you have in mind? We need to recover from this attack and make sure it won't happen again. We'll have our hands full. Ah, who knows? Maybe we'll have ourselves a good old witch hunt or a turf war. For someone who knows how to manipulate their pawns, it's the perfect way to increase their influence. It sounds like you've got it all planned out. Oh, nothing set in stone yet, but I see new opportunities that are going to take shape, and I'm not going to sit idly by and watch them slip away. You're the one who taught me that. Have you forgotten? That was long ago. Many things have changed since then. So, you're still part of this world? That's not for you to decide. You still lose whether you'll be sitting in the front row or standing in the back. What are you planning to do now? I can't leave the court. It is my duty to stay and help the Prince. <laughs> you haven't changed. We'll see about that. Ma'am, thank God you're here. When I found out that Hazel had sent you out there, I really thought that... Oh, are you alright? You're not hurt? I'm a little shaken up. That's all. I'm having a hard time wrapping my mind around what I just did. You survived a suicide mission. That's what you just did. It's a miracle you made it out without a scratch. Listen, I know it's not a good time, but we need to talk. Come back to my rooms with me. What for? Not here, ma'am. I'll tell you more once we're there. It's... important. And personal. Are you coming? Alright, I'm coming. Do you want me to ask Sylvia to send up a vessel? You must be starving. I don't want anything from you. Excuse me? Jara Drory. She was there, you know. She told them everything. Everything. I don't understand a word of what you're saying. It's been a long night. You should get some rest. I know what you did! 
You and Drory, you sold your asses to the humans. You wanted to wipe us out. You gave them everything about Hazel, the council, the whole fucking court. And then you threw your accomplice under the bus. You really have no fucking honor. You disgust me. Mm. And what for? Power? Were you planning to rule Boston? Is that why you got rid of Jara? You wanted to keep the throne all to yourself? You don't understand. It was a necessary sacrifice. You know what I mean. You did the same thing to those Anarchs. That was different. It's true. What I did, I did for you. For us. You got some fucking nerve. I had a debt. The SI. My back was up against the wall. I had to do something. Oh. And for Jar too? You had to do something? She wanted to destroy you. I'm protecting you, ma'am, like I've been doing since the very beginning. What debt are you talking about? I'd rather not talk about it. Believe me, the less you know, the better. No! No! I've had enough of your bullshit. You're going to own up to what you've done. <sighs> Do you remember when we first came to Boston? Of course. It was during World War II. France had surrendered, and Quentin King refused our request for asylum. You were afraid. So I asked the London court for help. They agreed to help me with King, on one condition. My eternal loyalty. They didn't ask much. They even left me alone for 80 years. What happened? Then London fell. The last bastion of the British Camarilla. Now that it's gone, they're going to need a new domain. They ordered me to prepare it for them. There are cities up and down the coast. Why did it have to be Boston? It was one of the first British colonies. The English kindred lived here for a long time. You know that. You knew a few of them well. Yes, I remember. Even if the elders aren't here anymore, there's still a sizable British presence in Boston. But they're in hiding. There's nothing more to say. Boston's got all the makings of the ideal haven. History. Contacts. That's it. Did Jara know? Yes. She'd been working with them for a long time, well before we got here. I didn't want to destroy her, but she went too far. She got what she deserved. I know your network. You must have allies here. Why bring our enemies into this? I was... Trapped. I might have support here, but nobody measures up to Iverson. There weren't enough of us, and the British are coming soon. I had to find a solution. You're afraid of them. The British, I mean. Why? I know what they're capable of. Listen to me. Things are going to change in Boston now, and fast. Hazel will fall, as will all those who support her. What? Are you planning to destroy everyone? Not me. No. Your British friends. All that for a goddamn throne. You know me better than that. Honestly? I don't think I do. I don't care about Boston. I know you have questions, and I know you don't believe me. But you have to trust me. Let the storm pass over, Mem. Nothing will happen to you. You want me to betray Hazel? You don't owe her anything. What kind of storm? The kind that will wipe out this city. But I can protect you. I can give us a fresh start. Do you trust me? Don't fuck me over. Never. All right. Don't do that. It's too late. Hilda? I taught you well. Hilda, please! Stop! <laughs> Sir.
So this is really it then. You made your choice. <laughs> 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 I should go see Hazel. I know. I'll meet up with you later. M.M. Thank you. bring out the best and the worst in us. They can plunge us into oblivion or signal the start of a golden age. Tonight will go down in history as the night we were able to prove we're not done yet. We demonstrated that our ability to adapt and change are the keys to our domination. The mortals were unable to break us, thanks to our resilience. We never doubted our superiority over those weak creatures for a moment. Many sacrifices were necessary. Our domain was violated and our existence threatened. But this is nothing compared to everything we have lost. Our family has been battered. The blood of our servants flowed like water. Our own kind were decimated in the flames. We will never forget them. We had to establish new agreements, forge new alliances, because this is how we strengthen our kind. Now that our reunification has been confirmed, we can count on strong allies who will help us secure our blood supply. Our old quarrels belong to the past. The trifles that separated us have been forgotten. Only one truth remains, our supremacy. Never again shall we be weak or disunited. That's what the mortals expect from us. Let us show them why we are the predators and they are the prey. Let us show them who their blood belongs to. Let us show them the power of immortality. The sacrifices are not over yet. Some will be lost. Others will lose what they have. But it will not be in vain. We are hunters, and what is taken from a hunter must be repaid a hundredfold. We must be able to count on each and every one of our kind. There is no room for bargaining in this war. Our eternal nature is our greatest strength. Boston has shown that it is stronger than old London and venerable Vienna. Tonight, we have tasted vengeance. Tonight, a sea of blood will flow.